Live from the Toad Hop Network Studios in Hollywood. This, this is the ToadHopNetwork.com. A place of our own without a lot of parents peering down our back. Radio worth watching. And here we go. All right, everybody, it's the Schmoes No Podcast. Me, Christian Harloff. Me, Mark Ellis. And that's your initials. How about that? That's what, me, me, Mark Edward Ellis. Mark Ellis. What does that sound that I don't like? It's like someone's on Facebook. Yeah, it sounds, <laughs> you know what? I got to turn this down. Uh, hey, everybody, so it is the Schmoes No Podcast. A lot of really cool stuff happening tonight. Uh, one of the coolest things is that Tiffany Smith is not here. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. Shut up. I'm kidding, kidding. Oh. We love Tiffany. Tiffany is our great co-host. We love kid. her, but we are very jealous, jealous and envious, and there's kind of a little bit of hatred as to where she is tonight, yeah. Christian, why don't you tell the good people listening at home mm-hmm. right now where Tiffany Smith is? What could possibly be better than doing the Schmoes No podcast on a Thursday night? She's with Kalel. She's, oh my she's God! She's dancing around with the Man of Steel, and we and the, for, we we usually take her to all these screenings. And today was the one that she didn't take us to. She got into the Man of Steel screening. (laughs) And she said, hey, who am I going to take? Am I going to take Mark? Am I going to take Christian? I'm going to take a big bag of Sour Patch Kids. Well, you know what? It doesn't matter because we lucked out. Okay, Mm -hmm. we lucked out because a couple of weeks ago, we got a huge scoop here that we broke before a lot of people. Just a little more thoughts about the thoughts on Pacific Rim and how the movie was. And sitting to my left is the lovely lady who broke that for us, and that's Brittany Wallach. How are you, Brittany? I'm awesome. How are you? Thank you for joining us again. You're welcome. Oh, my God. You're the one. Yeah. All right. So here, I was out of town for this Mm -hmm. podcast when you were in here last, Mm -hmm. Brittany, so it's very good to meet you in person. And I'm a little nervous. I'm a little apprehensive around you because you've seen the movie that I most want to see this summer. You're apprehensive? Are you nervous? I'll spoil it for you? Yes. I will, oh, no. That's nah, like, no. She, I tried to get it out of her. People she wouldn't who talk, talk yeah. in theaters and people who spoil things instant rage for me. So yeah. don't worry about it. You'll be fine. And you, you're a married woman? No, 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 oh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> then there's a proposal coming your way about halfway <laughs> right, through. Right. All right. So, the, guys, there's a lot of cool stuff happening tonight. We're going to get to news in a second. Um, we're also, if, if from 8 to 8.30, we're going to talk about uh, the movie news. Of course, Ken's going to do his thing in a, in a little bit. And then we're going to tell you guys Ooh. about the second, the <laughs> supplement. <Some> dr- <laughs> what I said? I said something wrong? No, some jerk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then the, then the supplement draft that we had on the Star Wars Episode 7, there was a cool night. We had pushed some of the videos up on Schmo Plus, but there's some things that happened there. We'll tell you a little bit about who we got on our teams, but also about there was something that happened. And one of the things that happened, it was with a former intern that we had, goes by the name, uh, formerly the artist known as Shoesy Pants. And now oh, is yeah, where's name. that kid? Well, we're going to talk about him. <laughs> he didn't get stabbed or anything. No. I almost stabbed him at, this, at the draft, and I'll tell you why a little later. But why can't we have one Star Wars <laughs> fantasy draft <laughs> exactly. without yeah. drama breaking but up? Why can't was... we just sit down, have girls clearly not be interested in us, <laughs> yeah. and pick fantasy the, people every, to be in the new movie? Every Star Wars fantasy draft we have turns into the Red Wedding. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, that oh, Reference. Alert. Spoiler alert. Listen, Pop so, culture reference. Reference. Yeah, the person dropping Topical. references is a spoiler. It's uh, Ken, our great producer. Ken, can I kick you out of that seat for a second, please? Uh, I'm sorry. I, didn't, I just you, warmed my You headphones. sat there. You sat there. I got to do something here because I got to introduce every time. Look, Schmo, Schmoville needs to know this. Uh, Shoesy Pants is no longer with us, but that doesn't mean that we only have he's one. He's not here. He's not dead. No. <laughs> That's what you say about people so who he died. Says. Well, we'll see. We'll see. But now, look, the, the thing is, to what one of the things that we, we have a brand new intern. Uh, and then we have, you can follow this intern at Schmo Kid. We're going to refer to him here in the studio as The Kid. I love it. Not you kid. I'll make you famous. Kid. Yeah, now the wild man told me, though, before I got in here, I'm like, this kid's already stepping in some shit. Yeah. Like, he just, what happened? Uh, we're going to find out in a second. Like, literally, I walk in. I literally, I walked into the studio. I'm getting ready to prep, and, and I see, like, there's commotion going yeah. on. And then was like, flying the in kid the air. did this, the <laughs> no. kid did that. And I'm like, what did he do? He's been here for fucking ten minutes. So let's let's introduce, let's bring him in, the kid. Come on in. Come on in. Put yeah. on the, the cans. Right. There he is. Let's welcome the kid. Brando is okay. his name. It's the last time we ever call him Brando. He's the kid from now on. <laughs> so the kid, how are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys? You're good. So, all right. So, the kid, let me ask you this. I got some background real quick on the yeah, kid. Yeah. Your name's Brando. Yes. And that's a real thing. That's a real thing. That's not something you put on for chicks. Nope. It's Brando. And right. where do you hail from, dear boy? Well, uh, what? Wait, wait, where, <laughs> do you hail where, from? where are you from? Where yeah. are you from? Oh, okay. I'm from uh, Verona, Italy. Oh, Italy. Okay. Oh, oh, my right. God. So, wow. So let's, let's get into this. I'm not going to have a chance to do talk. You know what happened? <laughs> do, you, do you know what happened here tonight? So, all right. So, let's bring in the wild man. Oh, wild man, God. what yeah. What happened? Uh, well, we were shooting a Schmo Plus video, yeah. and uh, me, JTI, and Captain Kickass over here, the kid, was just like, <laughs> inter- you know, it was like, oh, Johnny Ice interviewed himself, and then he called Kenny. Well, they don't know, they don't know, they're not our Kenny. No, not Kenny Knapsack, right, so Kenny, yeah, the engineer Kenny, there's, Kenny, there's, there's an engineer here at Toad Hop. He's who, like Mr. Who, Toad Hop. He's, yeah. and he, he's, he's handicapped. Correct. So he, and he was here, and then so the kid did what? The, ki- the kid called him CK for, for, for what? Kenny. 
You can't. Yeah, it was awkward. Wait, 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 isn't that the name you asked me to call? What did you say? Him? What did you say to him? He, he just... told me to call, you know, and that's Shawnee. I was like, good job. And, and that's CK. You didn't come like... up with crippled in your head. No. Okay. All right. All <laughs> Do right. I let, look? Let me say this. Welcome to Schmovel. You've just been pranked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> to his credit, Give though. Give him a hug, Josh. Yeah. 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 Take out the cans yeah. and go I, get a hug. Wait, okay. <laughs> I, I walked in, and, and this is going on. They I look love at this me, And they all turn, and Josh is like, I'm going to get this in little buds. And before anyone says anything, I'm like, Guys, this is a prank, isn't it? Yeah, the first and thing And they you all said, stop. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, I'm so smart, guys. Yeah. They all turned to like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, And so you're shitting your pants. And not shit my pants. I was like, yeah. great, I'm not dead. And they kept going with it until now. They kept going with it. And I was like, shit, wait, what did what what did I just say? Oh, good. No. Well, good. Well, good. Well, welcome to Schmo. Look, this is, wait, let me let me let me tell you about the Schmo kid and what and, and the reason why he's here. Um, this kid did something that was really cool and really impressed me. He wrote a handwritten letter, first of all, which nobody does anymore. Who does twice. that? Twice. Did it twice. Was Sounds. it in Italian or, or English? No, no, it was good. I didn't even know. No, it was perfect English. And he wrote, and he's a fan. You're a fan of the show. Absolutely. You've been listening for a while. Yeah, uh, July. July. Okay, yeah. so about at least at least a year. Yeah, at least a year. Okay, great. So and and he and he had very impressive thing. And he said one thing that 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 sold me. He said, "I'm better than Shoesy Pants." I said, "Okay, you're hired." <laughs> <laughs> and, and that you was can it. call Shoesy Pants crippled. You can do that all night long. <laughs> yeah, we, we do not have a problem with that. Yeah. All right. So uh, again, the kid. We want to welcome you here. Thank yeah, you for thank joining you. us. I'm, I'm so glad to be here. You have a lot of cool stories that we're going to talk to you. You worked with a lot of cool people and oh, film yeah. sets and stuff. Oh, yeah. So we're going to get into that stuff too. I want to talk to you about some of that stuff eventually as well. How many? So what are you here? You with us for about a month, three weeks? Yeah, yeah, until the end of the month. The end of so the month. I made sure awesome. I would, you know, squeeze in the last uh, the last uh, episode on what, 28th, 29th? Yeah, okay, all right, good. Good, good, good. Right, and so I want you to take a breath because that, yeah. it, that's the last time you're going to get pranked yeah. on the show. Well, <laughs> so Don't much. worry about it. Yeah, exactly. Well, again, just to show you, um, uh, Leanne, one of our regular commenters, holy shit, he can write? No wonder he got the job. <laughs> oh. <laughs> exactly. All right, so thank you, the kid. Let's get Kenny thank in so there. And, uh, again, all right, follow, the kid. Well done. Follow the kid well at Schmo Kid. As he cleans his drawers. All right, so <laughs> Johnny Ice, you ready for the music? That was Let's do very it. nice. I'm Ken Epps, so I can use your Schmoes No headlines brought to you by Imperial Beer and SchmoesNo.com, your source for movie, reviews, news, and clues. The Guardians of the Galaxy Project just keeps collecting big names, and now one of the biggest additions is Benicio del Toro. Yeah. Del Toro has been signed to a multi-picture deal with Marvel Studios that will place him in the Guardians film franchise and beyond. According to our friends at Comic Book Movie, reliable sources are saying that Del Toro and the bags under his eyes will be playing Tanelir <laughs> Tevin, <laughs> a.k.a. The Collector, one yes. of the elders of the universe, yes. the one that used his power of prophecy to foresee the threat Thanos posed. Oh yeah, him. <laughs> Lee Pace has already been cast in the movie as a yet unnamed villain, but some rumors had him pegged to be the collector as well. All part of the internet's plan to guess until it's right. <laughs> Since this thing's based on comic book movies turned to business model thingy seems to be working out, <laughs> Warner Brothers is moving forward on a big screen adaption of DC Comics' venerable series Fables. David Hayward in his Heyday Films is also involved in the process, and they have a bit of a successful track record in adapting lit-based projects for the screen with something called Harry Potter. The 14-time 14, <laughs> 14 Eisner-winning series Fable centers around fairy tale based characters like Cinderella and Snow White, who are kicked out of their own world and now live in a secret pocket of New York City and become the best cosplayers on the Comic-Con circuit. <laughs> Fantastic Four writer Jeremy Slater has been tapped to write the script of the movie that your dad will not go see. You know, this comic book to movie thing is getting out of hand, if I can editorialize here, and I think next we're going to be making a movie about that Archie comic. Oh, wait, this just in. Warner Brothers has finalized a deal to produce a movie based on the Archie comic series. Wow. But this one will be Archie, Jughead, Veronica, Betty, and Zombies in a veritable jumping of sharks for two genres. What? The movie will be no, based on the zombies. upcoming That's Archie and the Afterlife series. No. Pitch Perfect director Jason what? Moore will handle the project. No. The final Man of Steel trailer was released this week as a Nokia Jeez. exclusive and features a lot of hot Zod on Superman action, or as it's called in West Hollywood, cape fucking. 
<laughs> it's interesting to note that if you were to take all the Superman teasers, trailers, and featurettes and put them together, you will have seen the entire movie. Mm. <laughs> With Sam Mendes supposedly on board to return as director, the next James Bond film is rolling forward, and Penelope Cruz has been adding to the da- added to the dating Ooh. Rolodex of Britain's Best Spy. Yahoo Movie UK was the first to report that the Spanish sex spot will be the next Bond girl. She is being proclaimed as, and I'm quoting here, ladies, the oldest Bond girl ever at Gasp 40. Perhaps this explains the proposed title for this film, Ian Fleming's James Bond in Age Appropriate Dating. <laughs> I'm Ken Napsock, and those are your Schmoes No Headlines, brought to you by Imperial Yay! Beer. Yay! Right, let's, uh, Cake fucking! I, I mean, I, I was going to say let's start with the Benicio de Toro thing, but how do you not start with this Archie thing? What's go- Zombies for, and Archie? You're not joking. What? That's not a joke? No, that, I that's, know. Uh, cr- cr- the less the internet lies, that is a Unless true Schmo- thing. Unless wow. Schmoes lied, uh, because Mark, <laughs> R- Mark Riley posted it up as well, and it, it is... Uh, that, I guess it's based off a comic that they did it's a, a while series, ago. It's a series, I think, that's forthcoming if I read it right. Mm-hmm. So it, it, <laughs> we'll I, see. Yeah. Let me put this fire out real quick. Yeah. This ain't like the last week when we had Quicksilver. You know, when we were debating no, that. No. It's Archie. I know. But Who the, cares about that, Archie right. fighting zombies? Right. Who cares exactly. about Archie in general? It yeah. sounds like they're just trying to art. Oh, well, Maybe they threw the Would you see a film? Would I you agree. See with you. Why? Why? You would see a film about Archie, really? My, my grandma had all like the Archies. So you don't care those zombies? Well, I guess so, but I mean, you got to put like a twist on it. Right you now. stop like, it! You yeah, twist back into that seat. Like, You're killing me. Zombies. zombies? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the best color, color commentary in the world for nothing. Who uh, who uh, wins in a fight between the Archie zombies and the Twilight vampires? I got the zombies at minus three and a half. Yeah, I'm with zombies, you. I'm with you. No. I, that's I mean I don't know who gives a shit. Like you said, Ellis. Well, this is it's a big yeah. business now, and I guess they're just mining zombies. the depths just with bi- comics everywhere. Best thing about that movie is that Ken Napsack got a joke in the news segment. That's about the truth. That's All right, the best thing about it. Moving, moving on, moving on. Um, so yeah, let's talk about let's talk about Del Toro. Now, yeah. now, sorry. So this now this apparently was the big news that El Mayambi was talking was it about. Was it or was it was it the Doctor Who girl? Because that th- broke first. I, no, I, th- I think it was this one. I think it was El Mayambi Probably. that broke this one. Because that, that was talking about this one because. Now, we don't know what he plays yet, correct? There's the rumors. Like I said, the Internet just sometimes shotguns things until they can think they can get it right. Is but it possible that I'm... I'm he I'm looks like asked, the collector. But could it be mm. Thanos? Could it be? No, I no. don't think so. I don't think so. Brittany, so what are your thoughts on Benicio de Toro being cast? Who will he uh, well, play? First, I think he's fantastic. I hope he's the collector. I really okay. do. Now, what's the yeah. collector? What, what does he do? What is the collector? He literally collects things from the cosmos. So he's like a... He's, he's is he like a hoarder museum. for outer space? Honestly, yeah. yeah. But he's got these amazing uh, displays for all of them. He's the one that... That Thanos went to to collect, I believe it was the time gem from, from when he was creating the Infinity Gauntlet. Don't okay. quote me on that. Okay. Come on, Brittany, you no, gotta know time. this stuff. Uh, I, I know, right? Down. What do you go call the, the cripple guy CK? <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> But no, he's he's a fantastic character. I don't know how he's going to fit into this. I I, I couldn't tell you because I've only known him from Thanos. But yeah. I'm really excited about. it. I think okay. it's gonna be great. So, all right, so you're you're excited now about this Guardians mm-hmm. of the Galaxy. You think that they're doing oh, it yeah. right? I do. Everything? Did you see the photo that James Gunn posted today no. on his Twitter? I don't want to. I think I'm. I'm not. Did you? Do we no, have it on guys, no. If you, yeah, we do now. It's uh, James Gunn tweeted it a couple hours ago, and I don't know if he's on set or if he's in a, in a garage somewhere. Yeah. But he's in, he's somewhere well lit in like a like a patio, and okay. there is a real raccoon. On a leash, Uh-oh. sitting up with its fat little <laughs> stomach. I kid you not. You know, James Gunn has his hands out, and the little raccoon's like thanking him almost. He's like, "Hey, I'm Rocket. Thanks uh-huh. for doing me justice." They're in just your tiny film. burglars. Oh, oh my god, it was the cutest thing. Can I ask a Guardians it. of the Galaxy oh, question? So a lot cute. of people are saying this is going to rival that other uh, space opera thing. That's what Riley put on. No, the show. Rival this would rival Star Wars. No, does no. this mostly uh-huh. take place in space? Yeah. it has a raccoon. It's the cosmic universe and a talking tree, right? Groot, yeah. Groot. He's the king yeah, of planet X. That. Actually, he's a king of planet X. But Kendall, right. I, I am on the side with you that it's not yeah. going to, to no. rival it. But no, no. if someone would have told you before, so in the second Star Wars, second em- in Empire, Luke's going to show up to some uh, swamp planet <laughs> and he's going to be talking to a little Muppet, <laughs> uh, you'd be like, I would. I, your, your point is well yeah, made. Right. I I'll just, take a Muppet over a raccoon any day of the <laughs> no, week. No, the, ca- the, the raccoon no, thing no, no. scares me. Yeah. No. This collector guy scares no, me. He no, sounds no. like Watto from the prequels. Yeah. No, uh, what are you, some kind of a Jedi? <laughs> no. you know, like, 
No, Rocket, Rocket is the Republic shit. I'm Dennis. not kidding. He's Star Lord's right hand man. Mm-hmm. He's, okay. he's a, a weapons expert. He, okay. he's, he, in fact, he Could runs the Guardians at one point. Right. You okay. seem like you know ass. your comics. She so knows. You, he's amazing. You know Guardians of the Galaxy, and you were a fan of the series before yes. the film was announced. Yeah. So when the film was announced, are you like sweet, or are you ultimately apprehensive not, no, about no, no, no. how I'm, they can I'm pull I'm optimistic about a lot of things. So I'm not one of these people that's like, they're gonna ruin it just because I like it. No, James Gunn. He's got. I think he's got a great track record, and I think this is gonna be his next big thing. And I can't wait to see Rocket on screen. Wild man, you got some. Uh, yeah, I've never seen and or heard of these people. Yeah. But, uh, Josh, today, it's a raccoon. How pumped are you? <laughs> I'm super excited. Shut up. When you see him on screen. He will. I guarantee just him. Wait. I love that raccoon. Just I just wait. love the raccoon. He drinks, he uh, shoots guns, and he blows shit up. Sweet. Okay, well, That is wild man. Yeah, yeah it is. Well, that's true. Wait, raccoon <laughs> man or the actual raccoon? He's a no, raccoon. No, no, no. He's, he's a raccoon. wild he's man. In... Likes a raccoon. Oh, well. Yeah. Because yeah. we both searched through trash But no, the raccoon drunk. did all the things I just said. The raccoons, it sounds like Howard the Duck. You are our raccoon. Better. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. yeah. Well, Wild Man, yeah. what do you got? Well, I saw, like, I didn't know what it was, and I said, Benicio Del Toro, and he's one of my favorite actors of okay. all time. So they show this picture of, like, what the movie poster would look like from a comic book. It just right. looks like me that one time I went to Joshua Tree on acid, and I was like, this is what everybody <laughs> looks like. Yeah, right. Wait, wait, that one time you went to Joshua <laughs> Tree? Last week. Last yeah, week. Yeah, right, you know, right. is it Bernie Man? All right, let's, let's, switch, let's switch gears here, and let's go to, uh, so they announced now that Penelope Cruz yeah. is going to be the next Bond girl. Interesting. I don't know. I mean, because I think she, look, she's a, a super, super attractive yeah. woman. She's a little older now, but again, well, but she's forty. Let's, but, and come so, but on. I was let me, she's still let, got, let know, me finish. That's, James, that's my dating range. Let me finish. James Bond, funny. Daniel Craig looks like he's sixty three with all the, the drinking that he looks like he's done. But so I'm okay with that because sure. Penelope Cruz could be. I hope she's bad though. Let's get a bad Bond girl. Mm. Yeah. You mean like a bad actress? No. No. Like no. An evil. I was going to say we have Denise Richards. She's waiting by the phone. Oh, we yeah. can bring her can you back. you imagine oh. they brought her back like this the after credits? As the nuclear oh, physicist? God. Yeah, oh, I, I agree. I, I think Casino Royale had such a strong, a different kind of Bond girl, yeah. Eva Green. I think Wanda Salas uh, lacked a little bit in that category. It's the first Bond girl that James Bond didn't have sex with in the movie. Right, right. Uh, he just had sex with Strawberry Fields. But uh, is he Mark Ellis? Come on, Bond. Get in there. <laughs> He's the asexual Bond. Close the deal. Yeah, yeah. So um, well, I think they round, rebounded a little bit in this last one, but uh, I'm curious. She, she can hold her own. She's got the chops. Yeah, she's got the chops. The, sure. the, and, the age and, means nothing. Nothing because but, 40 is it's the new 20. You can get all that stuff touched up. It's like, absolutely. look, Tim Duncan's ageless, so is Penelope Cruz. Now, the, the question is, though, is this a little bit of nepotism with Javier Bardem? Um, uh, well, that's right. Are they, they, well, they're they like married, yeah, and they're so still and knocking so, boots, right? Yeah, so I, ho- I mean, no, they're married, <laughs> they're probably not. Sorry, sorry, they're making married. love. No, they're, they're married, they're probably not. They're, hands. they're probably watching Game of Thrones together every weekend. That's all they're doing. Um, <laughs> but but they, uh, that's I, not something you want to knock boots to. No, that is but, not. No, <laughs> but, I'm more of a Rex and Effect kind of guy. <laughs> and I'm not saying she doesn't earn it because she, you know, she's sure. she's talented, but the question is, is it did you know Javier Bardem say, hey, Sam. I would love for you to put, you know, give Penelope a shot here. And Penelope was probably on the set a lot, formed some relationships, and, you know. Yeah, well, but you're going a little nepotism crazy the last couple of weeks. You don't think yeah. that it was warranted? <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, we're talking about After Earth, of course. <laughs> what, was that? <laughs> what was that Morning Zoo radio voice? You just, what? You don't Aye. think it was warranted? And I'll do that voice every time. It's a wacky guy. You put your son in there, and I'll tell you what. <laughs> Archie, we got zombies chasing <laughs> us. I would have preferred zombies in that shit box on wheels. Oh, All right, let, let's let's take a phone call. Of defending after Earth. Yeah, as you should get tired. Let's, let's take a. I can hear myself screaming in the background. Please turn your please turn your radio down. Uh, all right, so hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Hey guys, it's Andrew Corsand. Hey man, what's up? What's up, dude? So uh, did he say Agent Colson? No, it, I think he it lives. Is. Wait, it's Agent Who? Are you still there? Oh hey, what's up? Oh, say it again. Hey, so who who is this man? <laughs> What is, oh, hold on. <laughs> Say it again, please. My I, connection's That's right. Just, we're asking who it is. What's your name? Andrew Korsman. Andrew Korsman. Okay. All right, so, Andrew, right. so how do you feel about Penelope Cruz as the new Bond girl? Um, I think she'll do a good job, uh-huh. but I'm just not that, like, excited. I was hoping, you know, probably someone a little bit better because... Her film, like, I was, wait. You got to watch, watch the horror, man. Yeah, someone I, a little bit younger and better acted. 
All right. Well, okay. I, thank you. Why won an Oscar? Yeah. Man. Well, I think I, I think that right away for the younger generation, they're going to say that. That's why I brought it up. Is if right. I think they're going to go, oh, she's kind of old, been around. But again, James Bond, Daniel Craig. Well, you, well let the kids stick his face in there again. Well, well, the, to the younger men out there, forty, you can still well, go. Let's, they let's ask Brando. Brando. The kids let's twenty ask Brando. years old. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, no, you, no, you stick your face right in Kenny's yeah, this mic and Brando. I think Kenny won't hold. Kenny won't hold you against that at all. You hear you hear the name Penelope Cruz, and you hear she's going to be a new Bond girl. Do you think she's hot? Would you like to have some? Somebody younger. What's your opinion? I was, I was, about, which, I was about to say, as uh, before Christian brought it up, I was thinking the same thing, you know, because of Javier, uh, Javier Bardem and, and, you know, being together, you probably create some relationships. I thought that, you know, if you look at the, at the, uh, the last film, a lot argued that the, the Bond girl is Judy Dench, not in, in, in the sexual sense. Yeah, and, yeah, know, no, but, yeah, yeah, know, yeah. So maybe if, if it shifts to more of a, not as much of, you know, the sexist appeal and more of the, the presence, the character. I mean, she's a good actress. Penelope Cruz is a really good actress, and so for she once, could so maybe, she could deliver. She could deliver, and for once, it could be like, oh, let's let's not focus as much on the sex appeal, but to create a strong, you know, female character who can Agreed. also be sexy. I, how, I about the kid? how about the kid? How about the kid? Not clearly, out of the park. He's not from yeah. Hollywood because we don't create strong female characters out here. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Go back to Robin Banks and Mini Cooper. Oh. <laughs> That's uh, uh, from way down, way down. town. But, you know, he made, no, the kid makes great points. You're like, on fire. Kid, I think the difference is that, w you, again, bringing up the After Earth thing, is that if you want to, like the second Jaden Smith gets in there, he's judged, and he's got a delivery. He's 14 years old. going to be harder to do. Yes, a couple of people are going to throw the accusations Penelope Cruz's way, mm -hmm. but she's someone who's got the chops and can go, watch what I do. I'll throw on the sex appeal. I might be the villain. I might be, you know, the damsel mm -hmm. in distress. I can do sure. it all. She's so, got a track yeah. record. She's a great actress. She pretended to be in love with Tom Cruise for like six months. Right. That is not easy to do. <laughs> the contract right. didn't go through. And now we got we got we got about nine more minutes. We got about nine more minutes oh. to the break. There's a couple things I want to. We got five, but yeah. how about how about yeah. six? How about six? How about six? All right. Um, so we got about six minutes before the break. Uh, now I wanted to talk. We did the Star Wars supplement draft mm -hmm. yeah. now, and we we added new people to our team. And I, Ellis did pretty well from stuff. Ellis actually picked the team for the Wild Man. The Wild Man got the first pick, and jo and Jonathan Reese Myers yeah. was the pick because yeah. look, I'm not going to sandbag it for my good friend Josh McCoo, who's probably going to bring me a beer in a sec. <laughs> Although um, you did put Lu you did put Luis Guzman on this team. Yes, you drafted yeah. Luis Guzman because I knew you'd be happy about that, yeah. and that was the last pick. That wasn't yeah. like in the middle. And I'm really excited about my team, but I know that not only was there was some controversy that Friday mm -hmm. night, Christian's a little perturbed at me right now because he keeps trying to throw a trade my way, and I keep saying no. And the more I say no, the more furious he gets to the point where I'm like, this guy knows something. I just he's got <laughs> casting information that he's not sharing with the rest of the group. I just thought Toby Kebbell is someone to keep an eye out. That's all I'm saying. But that's not. Not, but that's not that's not my biggest beef of the night. Now I want everybody in this room and Schmoville to listen to this because this is something I have to talk about. Our old intern, oh, Shoesy Pants. Going yeah. into this, yeah, right, all right. into it. Right all into right, it. Okay. Let's do it. This fucking guy. God I, rest his soul. Yeah, yeah. no, he's he, <laughs> he's doing great on the website. He really is. He's doing a great job. He and Riley can't say enough good things about what he's doing. So this has nothing to do with that. I called him when we did the Ellis when we did the first draft. I called up Riley and I said, "Riley, can you get a couple poster boards, and you know, so we can write all the names and the teams so everybody has them." So Riley, what does he do? He goes out to Staples, buys you know thirty five cent things. You throw up on the on the wall and and it's done. Total like I don't know what whatever it was. We don't need this to look like the NFL no, 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 draft. No, 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 no. There is know? a reason. There is a reason for this. So then shoes. I, I was agreeing with you. Oh, I thought you said there's no every reason time to I go. look at you it doesn't mean I'm cutting you <laughs> off. Right, right. It usually does. It usually does. So shoesy pants shows up with these things that you could knock out wrestlers with, okay, for poster boards. They're, <laughs> On the they're phone these, before, you called them the Ten Commandments. They, well, yeah. Well, he, he, he Are you talking about the thick poster boards? He board? bought like these the... thick things that cost $7 a piece. Those for pieces each, of shit cost $7? $7 a piece each. Look, yeah, but, right. Of course they're expensive. Why the fuck did he buy them? I called him up and I said to him, I go, look, dude, I need you to buy poster boards. All right, And he buys, he literally shows up with these things. Like the Ten Commandments, okay? And he shows up, and then afterwards, I, I, I had a whole spread there, I had food, I had all this stuff that was on the table, and, was at, he trying and, to and I just got, you, a, I just got him a shirt. No, because at the end, he looked at me like a valet after he just parked my car, and he's like, and, and he's like, he wants me to pay him for the thing. He didn't, he didn't bring it up, but I'm going. Have you spent 
35 cents on the boards like you were supposed to, I'm not paying you $30 because you're a moron. I'm just not doing it. And so I, I think that... Here's your, here's your stupid stipend for the month. But, uh, right, but am I, am I wrong? Like, should, should you just assume someone's going like, um, to... He was at Staples. He was at Staples where he bought them. Around the corner is I, the 35 cent sorry, thing. Sorry, Shoesy, I could be wrong. I'll, yeah, yeah. Look, I I'll be honest wrong. with you. The kid was already done with being an intern. He was already... like He had already clocked out. He had his farewell ceremony where we definitely yeah. did not retire his jersey. He's still bitching about the money. But look, I mean, it's not your fault, but you provided food for everybody, right. which is yeah. very nice. Yeah, I, yeah. I, Mark Riley and I provided some alcohol. Right. Uh, Josh McCuga would w- spent the night with his, you know, significant woman of interest. <laughs> yeah. So he wasn't there. Uh, so everybody contributed something to the cause. That was such a stutter Her, through. Your SWI. Your yes. I don't want to get interest. anybody in trouble. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Kenny, so what, what's your what's your thoughts on all this? I, I, I you know, look, I know he, he brought something in that you could use as armor sighting on an X, <laughs> X-Wing. I get it. <laughs> What is it? I mean, uh, are we he talking about like like what the Toad it's Hop like poster that, is? Like yeah. that? Yes, yeah. yes. I think there was uh, maybe a miscommunication beforehand. I thought he he maybe thought he was doing you a solid. But shouldn't and, you uh, ask? And, and I also think a lot of us may maybe had viewed this as a work event. Um, and you viewed, viewed it as a social call because we both. said on Schmo Plus. No, it's a team I'm not building arguing. exercise. Yeah. <laughs> so I it's thought maybe I, I think maybe it was uh, when your your plates of food, which by the way were impressive thank you, and thank very you. good. Thank your you. chili dip was thank amazing. You. I appreciate that. Your wife should go away more often. It's true. Um, yeah. Look, the bottom line is the kid's out thirty bucks and he's been banned from the building. So I don't think we have yeah. to worry about yeah. choosing. I, I How much you spend on it? It was yeah. thirty bucks. Yeah, for, as I'm saying, it was three posted worth for thirty bucks. Hey, oh, you're, hey, you're in, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? What's up, boys? It's the Time Lord, Mark Aquino. Hey, Time ta- Lord. Hey, time we Lord. What's happening, bro? Time Lord. Shoes and pants, a moron. Um, in your case, yes. Thank you. Is. Okay, good. All right, what, what do you got for us? What movie stories do you want to talk about? Um, I was I was listening I was uh, listening to what you guys were talking about with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy mm-hmm. and the whole Benicio del Toro thing. Yep. And um, and that and I think you're pretty on the spot with the whole Benicio del Toro thing. And I I, I wanted to bring something up with of like a uh, movie sto- scoop of my own. What do you got? Of, what do you got? Scoop. Um, I I actually. I wanted to know, um, what are your guys' thoughts on, this isn't really related to... That's all right. Let's have Galaxy. it. Well, Let's have it. Kind of. But um, it, what are your guys' thoughts on Ryan Gosling's directorial debut, How to Catch a Monster? It, it has uh, Christina Hendricks from Mad Men in it and the real Time Lord, uh, Doctor Who's Matt Smith. And mm. his first that guy is, that guy's just doing an impression of you, Aquino. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll, we'll talk about it here in a second. Thank you, Time Lord. No um, problem, guys. Let it schmo. <laughs> nice. Ah, let it schmo. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. like that. You're killing me, Mark. Oh, oh, right. Let, let it schmo. You're already... Schmo, like schmo. All right, we got one minute left before we, uh, we go to break let here. Let it schmo. Let it schmo. Um, really? I don't, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm no. interested. I want to see, you know, Gosling right now is one of those guys. It's like I'm interested in the things that he does. You know, I'd Could like he s- even have a movie where you talk talks? less yeah. mm-hmm. than drive? Yeah, it's true. Uh, uh, guys, we you are going to be cereal? back <laughs> after the break. I want you guys to do me a favor before we go to break. Just uh, tweet um, at JoeRU23 and say you were wrong. Po- tag, oh, hashtag, no. Hashtag, no. Hashtag, hashtag poster boards. Oh, I love um, these shoes. Sorry. All right, guys, so we'll be back after the break. Make sure you do that, please. Uh, Brittany Wallach, Christian Hall. Mark Ellis, Ken Knapsack, and Brando. The kid, the kid. <laughs> All right, after after uh, the words, we'll be back. After the words, whatever. How about this? Do you know what this is? Who knows what this is? Kenny should be here right I know what this is. This is The uh, the Hobbit. No, it's not. It's close. Silence of the Lambs? No, I want Brittany to listen to this. It's at the end of... Uh... Come on. Come on. Game of Thrones. It sure is. Yeah. Oh, Game is this the Thrones. Lannister song? It's the Lannister song. Yeah. This is, normally, we always play... Again, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, Schmoville suggests all the music that we play, and this week, because of the episode, not giving you spoilers, but it was a very, very... 
Good God, that's a, Jamie Lannister's music. It was a big, big episode, and so someone in Schmobile had suggested playing that theme. It's I thought a it was good a great call idea. because yeah. not only is it in the episode, but it plays a key role in the actual episode when you hear the music. Yeah. There's oh, a yeah, there's a turning of the tide. Oh, did you yeah. guys just play Reigns of Castamere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's been on repeat in my car in my office for. You're a weird four days. dude. I, I'll tell you why because I now respect Tywin Lannister a hell of a lot more. No, a lot of these people don't know anything, so you just you're talking like someone who who it's, knows. Is this it's not spoiler. No, the, it's the name of the tune is Winds of Castamere? Rains of Castamere. Rains of Castamere, Rains of Castamere. Yeah. and there's the Lannister version, and then there's a version the Scorpions did mm. in 1989 yeah. when the Absolutely. wall fell. Yeah. Well, now Joe you know, Satriani also did a cover version <laughs> of the concert. Well, you know, 89. you know, we're talking about TV. Something that I want to talk, talk to you guys about as well at Schmoville is that the Wild Man's going to be doing a uh, segment a little later on. I'm excited show. about this. Me too. It's, it's going to be called Wild Man TV, and he's going <laughs> to... That's the name we settled yeah, on? Wild, I love it. Wild Man TV, and he's going to go ahead and he's going to... There's going to be about three big stories, the things that he had seen on TV, things he wants to talk about with TV, and we'll all comment on it, and um, and we're really excited about it, because he's been really excited about this this segment, and it's going to be a lot of fun, so we'll do that a little later in the show, but before we do that, again, if you guys don't know about Ripped Apparel, hey, the kid, why don't you st- stand behind me for a second, because what he did was, he shows up today, again, what he did, his kid's doing everything right, look at this. He's got a ripped apparel shirt mm-hmm. on. And Smart, uh, yeah. I, I, we just have an announcement real quick. Right, Brando has now broken the record for the most screen time in one episode. That's true. By an <laughs> That's true. Right. Congratulations. Yeah, they're together. Uh, all right. So, and again, I have on a Game of Thrones shirt from Ripped. If you guys don't know Ripped, if you listen to the show, chances are you do know. If you don't, if you're a first time listener, check out the, the underneath there's that widget there that says Ripped Apparel. They give great deals, 24 hours. Love Ripped. Yeah, it's so good. The, the, the mixture of different shirts, of pop culture stuff, movies, TV shows. I got a Death Star Disco Ball it's pretty mm-hmm. t-shirt cool. on and I'm a huge fan of that. Yeah, and, and what do you have on, Ken? I have the Game of Clones shirt. Yeah, it's pretty oh, great. So ba- basically, what you do, guys, if you it want, somehow if you makes like, Kenny less nerdy when he wears it. It's the truth. <laughs> if you guys want, if you guys want to check out the shirts and you like one of the designs of the shirt, all you got to do is you type in SK Podcast and you can get a dollar off that shirt. So it's worth it. Could so. I just say at one point today, I left my house with two comic books in my hand and this shirt on, and I'm surprised it wasn't jumped in the parking lot. No, <laughs> uh, that's um, true. Our guest is here. Uh, guest is here. Bring him on in. All, all right. right. All right. Let's, uh, so let's talk. We're bringing in Dan Mervis, who's an award winning director. He's a screenwriter, producer, and a critically acclaimed author, as well as being the co founder of the Slam Dance Film Festival. Dan Mervis is here. Dan Mervis, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Schmoville, Dan. How are you? Give me some cans. You got them. Okay, great. Hello. How are you, Dan? Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet, be met. <laughs> <laughs> thank thank nice you for. Uh, I like how you're negotiating the cans with the hat on. You look like a really cool Vegas DJ right now. It's <laughs> the truth. Welcome to the pool party. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, Dan, thank you so much for joining us. We're happy to have you. I mean, you've uh, you've done some great stuff, and we can't we can't wait to talk to you about it. Oh, terrific! I'll be um, back in a few minutes, and we'll yeah, come back in a few <laughs> minutes, please. <laughs> Where's the John around here? Yeah, sure, we're gonna we'll make I just sure found it. Yeah, we'll make sure that our new intern doesn't insult you like he has been uh, everyone else that's walked that's in here so far. Right there, he's in the red shirt. Oh, yeah. Stay away from that yeah. guy. Um, all right, so let's let's talk about Slam Dance first because so you sure. you're you're the you're the brains behind the, behind the magic here. We needed to we wanted to find out kind of how it all started. Well, I'm not the muscle behind the magic. Magic, but I'll tell. I'll tell yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. We it started back in uh, '95. I think it was 1895 at, at this rate. But um, and and I had made a movie called Omaha the Movie. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, uh, you know it's a silly little movie, but at, at the time we thought, oh yeah, we'll we'll get into Sundance. Right, so, right. So what, what could possibly go wrong with that plan? And, <laughs> and uh, but it turns out everyone else wanted to get into Sundance too. No. So, I've yeah, heard about that yeah, festival. Yeah. It sounds yeah. it sounds like a good time. Hang out with Bob Redford. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Wine. Want to do that. And this was like the year after Kevin Smith was there. And yeah. anyway, and it turns out that what we didn't know was that you know it was kind of a year, a, a big year of change for independent film in general. It was a year that Miramax became part of Disney, right. uh, Fine Line became part of Warner Brothers, um, and and. Sundance itself was just getting bigger and showing more uh, second-time directors and, and alumni directors with bigger names and, and, and you know more Hollywood distribution deals already in place. And uh, so they had kind of forgotten about the first-time director. You know, so yeah. all, people like me who had kind of been influenced by that first generation of Sundancers, the Soderberghs and, and uh, you know, Robert Rodriguez and Richard Linkletter. And um, so they kind of left us behind. So we thought, well... You know, and, and we had distributors tell us point blank: if you don't get into Sundance, you won't get distribution. Right. So, you know, otherwise, you that won't. was the one yeah. festival you right. got. That's that was it. You got that was crack it. Yeah, and you, and you wouldn't you wouldn't get into other regional festivals. You wouldn't get into all into or nothing. International festival, exactly. So we had heard about a couple 
uh, you know, scruffy little filmmakers from Colorado the year before who had <laughs> scruffy done... Scruffy nerf herders. Yeah, it's <laughs> the worst kind of, um, Who had shown their first film there, also didn't get into Sundance, the year before, and had gotten a little bit of attention for it. You know, a couple guys named Trey and Matt something. Or oh. Uh, oh. Something okay. about Santa musical. Claus fighting uh, Jesus. No, it was before that. It was no, before it was, that. Before wasn't that. it Hannibal? Oh. Cannibal the Musical, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And, oh, and yeah. we had had, yeah. like, the same lawyer as those guys. We'd heard about them, so we thought, okay, well, that's a good idea. Why not take that idea but multiply it by 24 and right. get... 12 features and 12 shorts, you know, combine our resources and, uh, you know, come up with a cool name that would look good on a T-shirt. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so we came up with Slam Dance, and it was really, it was a great year because the, the press was kind of rebelling against Sundance, and we were the darling story. And, and so, and we decided to just keep on doing it. And so, you know, we're heading into our 20th year. Uh, you know, we've, sh- our focus has always been on first-time directors with low budgets, with uh, no distribution deals. So we've showed... Uh, Christopher Nolan. Yeah, I was just going to say. Yeah, right? it's, it's, it's so a nice group. Nolan. Christopher Christian, Nolan's Christian was starting to smell that name. I was starting to smell that, but because, yeah. again, we're, we're We did no. some web stalking this <laughs> week. No, <laughs> that's, that's A couple awesome. names yeah. come up when you Google your name. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Christopher Nolan. Yeah, yeah. Christopher Nolan. Yeah, it's it's amazing Nolan what you fan. can do with tagging. It's <laughs> very true. And but, uh, uh, but Ryan Johnson, we showed his first Okay, that's what's going to And by the way, Ryan's first credit was working as a PA on my first movie. Wow. You hear that, Brandos? Big things come from small beginnings. Exactly, yeah. Well, that Get me a coffee. And... <laughs> so, and, you know, and people like Ben <laughs> Zeitlin, Lena Dunham, uh, uh, wow. uh, you know, uh, Lynn Shelton. I mean, all kinds of interests. You know, Warren Pelly, um, you know, uh, Paranormal Activity was a slam dance film. Yeah. So it's been a and, – and these guys, a lot of them haven't just shown their films there. They've stayed involved. And Chris Nolan's wife, Emma, who's his producing yeah. partner, mm-hmm. she, became, she was a programmer for two more years. Wow. You know, the guys, uh, the Russo brothers, who are doing uh, Captain America 2 now. Oh, right, right, you know, right. And they've won Emmys for Arrested Development. They were programmers for, like, three years. That's wow. the after we showed their first film. That's so. incredible. And I know Maybe. Christian's got a lot of questions about the Christopher Nolan thing. If I may, yeah. uh, I want I got a real quick question about Oren Pelly. When he showed, so they showed the original Paranormal Activity. Exactly, yeah. Slam. Was, it, was it his version, or was it the one that they, yeah, sl- did they change the ending? No, this was his version. Uh-huh. And, you know, and there was a little announcement at the end, like, hey, we sold our remake rights to DreamWorks. So we're like, okay, that's cool. You know. How did the crowd oh, react to that film? Because it was such an original piece of work when it came out at the time. How? What was the crowd reaction like when they showed? They it? liked it. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, who wouldn't like it? That's you know? cool. So, as yeah, and he's been a great guy and been a supporter of, of the festival since then too. A lot of these guys have. Yeah, know? see that. That's, that's I guess leading into the question I had as well because I am I'm a huge Nolan fan and a lot of a lot of our listeners are as well. Now, when you see like some of these these, these directors, you've seen shit tons of them since it, since the festival started. I just saw Chris on the beach three weeks ago. Okay, and so that's look, see. The, and the, amazing, on he, he wore a three-piece suit. <laughs> <laughs> Strangest thing. But when you see Nolan's first... Three-piece bathing suit. When you, when you saw him, before you saw him in the three-piece, when you saw him on, uh, when his first film hits, did you know right away, like, that, this guy? Yeah, but here's the funny thing. He sh- so we show his film, yeah. and he had just sold the, sold the distribution. He had just gotten distribution like a week before the festival, so that's why it was still eligible Yeah, because you know, we'd programmed it before then, and that was one of the reasons it got distribution from a small distributor. The distributor shows up, and they're like, eh, slam dance, how quaint, and they walk away. You know? right. <laughs> and then uh, Cool name, but how quaint. Yeah, how yeah. quaint. See you later. But they had the T-shirt. And so, <laughs> so Chris and Emma show up, and there's 14 people at their screening. Oh. You know, I mean... And they're like, ew, there's only 14 people at the screening. What's up with that? And we thought our distributor was going to pass out flyers or put a poster. And I'm like, no, you you got to. It's you. So uh, I said, you know, get some flyers Uh and get your asses down to Kinko's. And get uh, on the freaking streets and pass out some flyers, Chris, you know. Isn't that crazy? And uh, he's like, really? And I was like, yeah, uh uh-huh. Because you've got one of the best films here. We knew that, you know, following. you got to be your own street team. But yeah. you got to do it. And it was just him and Emma. And we're like, get the hell out there and pass out flyers. So, you know, the second screening, they have 40 people. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, it, um, it almost tripled yeah, their sure. numbers. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. it, it did. Um, you know, they, put, they, they worked it, you know, and it got out there. And, it, you know, he's done okay for himself. So, so yeah, that's got to be pretty yeah, cool, though, to be able to see, like, you know, like, my festival launched that guy's career. My, my festival did this. You mm-hmm. know, it's, it's a fact that. And also, because being a director yourself, to see... Just to see these different talents come in and out, that's oh, got to be great. so satisfying. It, 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 it is, and you know, I try to collaborate with a lot of these 
guys, the ones that still take my calls. And, yeah. You know, <laughs> really? Do and both, most right, of them don't? They kind of shun no, you once No, they're it. actually, no, they're, yeah. we, we have a very cool alumni. That's cool. Base. Yeah, no, they're all very cool. And, um, but yeah, I mean, there's a great spirit of collaboration because all the programming is done by alumni. Yeah. Um, you know, our motto is by filmmakers for filmmakers, or as I like to say, by unemployed filmmakers for unemployed uh -huh. filmmakers. And, <laughs> by and waiters so, uh, for waiters. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if we sh could be so lucky. And um, so, yeah, I mean, a lot of the projects I've had, you know, the Eisenstep project was with the Slam Dance alum and, you know, Producers have been alumni. I met my cinematographer for Between Us, the current oh. movie, mm. uh, at Slam Dance. You know, so it, it it is this great kind of spirit of, of collaboration. And, and what happens is a lot of these people, uh, you know, their second film will play at Sundance. Yeah, you know? and then they they do very well there because they've kind of we're almost like a training camp. Mm -hmm. for Sundance. Yeah, they, 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 they don't admit been, it. They've no. been to a show before. Now the, yeah. the nerves aren't there. Now they know how to they play They know how to pass out the flyers, yeah. literally. Would you, <laughs> would you say it's kind of like a WonderCon to Comic-Con type thing or, or better than, better than WonderCon? Yeah, it's a good comparison. Nerd alert. Well, yeah, WonderCon yeah, is. Yeah, it's a smaller than, Comic-Con. Yeah. It's in Anaheim. Yeah. It's I've fun. Heard. You know, go down there, have a couple hours on the floor. But no, but no, that's not WonderCon this year. Yeah, WonderCon was Again, way that's, bigger. Well, yeah. That's comparison that's why I was to, to the Woodstock. Yes, well, that, that, well, that, and that was my point. For those of you who don't care about WonderCon. Well, again, I don't know. I just thought that was a bigger festival. But the difference is that is that we're... You know, 50 feet away from Sundance. Yeah. I mean, we're literally a snowball's throw across the street. So it's, you know, people come to both events at the same time. It's, it's simultaneous. Uh, they that's come cool. to our parties. Yeah. They come to, you know, and that's good. Uh, you know, it should be like that. And, and I think Sundance... Is there like a rivalry a little bit? Is there well, like, a, like, like softball teams going, you steal their mascot <laughs> yeah. and... They don't like you? Well, for many years, okay. anyway, they didn't like us. Okay. I mean, Robert Redford called us uh, parasites. Really? Which was the best press we could have ever gotten. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to talk about Wait, wait, wait. wait. So, so why well, he was calling you parasites because you... Because we were. Because you were. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> okay. I, mean, I mean, let's face it. All I mean, right. We were. But, um, you know, I like to Love think of it as... As you know, we're like the the, the beautiful moss in, on the oak tree that yeah. just makes the whole forest look pretty. Oh, I like you know? that. That's what, like but, the leeches like in the that. medieval yeah. times yeah. would actually help with uh, bloodlust. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a much better analogy. Yeah, but, we but were actually, like I'm, I'm here for you, Dan. Yeah. I yeah. am. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was perfect. <laughs> but you so, guys are okay now, though. You're in a yeah, ish. Uh, uh, yeah, a lot better now. Okay. Yeah. No, and they, you know, and I think they finally realized. First of all, they've got a lot of other bigger problems with paparazzi and Paris Hilton coming in. Yeah. Corporate people that do nothing for any festival. How awful is she at a film fest? She just checked her cell phone in the theater yeah. concert. Yeah, her, dog, her dog shitting in the aisles. <laughs> right. I, yeah. Yeah. I uh, heard there was uh, going to be a dance. Is there um, a dance here? Um, so we're here so. with Dan Mervish, who is the co-founder of the Slam Dance Film Festival and getting a lot of really cool stories and how it all began. I know, Brittany, I know you have some questions that you wanted to ask about the mm -hmm. film, but before you do that, I also wanted to talk to you the fact that you were mentored by Robert Altman. Yes, yeah. So my first film, the one that we started Slam Dance yeah. with, so he, um, can we say profanities? Fuck yeah. <laughs> I guess we can. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, so I, I was a film student uh, in the graduate pro program at USC, and everyone else was doing shorts, and people said, well, you know, even when they would do good shorts, which was rarely, they, people would say, they'd go to meetings and people would say, well, that's great, kid. Let us know when you've done a feature. And they'd be like, what? I just spent $100,000 in three years doing this You're supposed to give me the money. I know. So I said, well, screw it. Why don't I just do... Um, you know, you said fuck it. I, yeah. No, right. well, I'll get to that later. So <laughs> I, I like where this is going. Uh, I, yeah, no, I said, because, you know, I'd heard about Robert Rodriguez and, and Richard Linklater, these yeah. kids in Texas making these little movies. And I said, well, why don't I just do a feature? So I, I, grew, I grew up in Nebraska, but I hadn't lived there for a while. So I went back there, uh, you know, had written a kind of silly romantic comedy set in Nebraska called Omaha the Movie. And, uh, and no one had done an indigenous Nebraska film before. This is before Alexander Payne, by the way. <laughs> and um, and uh, anyway, but I said to the film commission, I said, look, I, I need a local producer. So they said, well, there's this guy, Dana. He works on commercials. He pours cement on the weekends. You know, uh, We know he wants to get into features. I said, okay, that seems like an interesting guy. And they said, oh, and by the way, his grandfather's Robert Altman. I said, wow. he's hired. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, and, I mean, I'd always been a fan of Altman. Of I think there was a poster of MASH above my computer while I was writing, just coincidentally. Uh. So, uh, And I got along great with Dana and still do. And so yeah, so we would turn to uh, to his grandfather, to uh, to Bob Altman for advice, and 
So how uh, cool is that? The first time you, you actually meet him, though, is yeah, that crazy? That, or what? Yeah, no, it, it was it was great. I mean, is it, it nerve wracking yeah, the can, first can, time you actually have to ask him for advice on, oh, on yeah. a pro, like because you wonder in your own head, you're doubting yourself, then you're like, if I put this before the master, mm-hmm. is he going to kick me to the curb or is he is well, he going to be helpful? Exactly, yeah, and I mean, you know, his I mean, luckily he was stoned a lot of the time. So that, <laughs> I mean, that kind of put everyone at ease. I think that's probably why you're so can comfortable you, here in the room tonight. Yeah, can you yeah. can you paint that picture of the, how like the first time? Because again, it's well, it was on the phone. Time. Oh, it was. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so again, Dana's like, you know, arranged it for me to call okay. him, and he's like, yeah, I don't know, 90% of directing is is casting. And I was like, all right, then, 90% of directing is casting. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, how do I get a cast? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, but it was good. And then in post-production, he really helped us out. And then when we had, um, uh, uh, and I should say, the other the other kind of famous director at the time, who, the only other connection I had to Hollywood was, um, was Harold Ramis. Oh. I'd gone to Washington University in St. Louis. It's a good connection undergrad, uh-huh. And that, yeah, you went there. I swam there. Good enough. Okay. <laughs> and um, and anyway, he was like That's the only great. successful alum. Yeah. So uh, and he had based Animal House. Besides Josh, um, you were a great swimmer. We right, don't want you right. to think you weren't a successful. Uh, alum. But he had based um, his part of the Animal House script on yeah. his experience there. So I called him up, and I think it was one of his down periods in his career because he called me back. Mm-hmm. I said, hey, Mr. Ramis, hello, how do you do? I'm, I'm making my first feature. It's a comedy. Do you have any advice? And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, you got a piece of paper? I go, yeah, here's a piece of paper. You got a pencil? I go, here's a pencil. He says, okay, write this down. Says, rule number one. Rule number one. Hire Bill Murray. Hire Bill Murray. Uh. Okay, rule number two. Rule number two. Turn on camera. Turn on camera. And I was like, okay, let's go back to rule number one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, what's that so, number? Yeah. Right. So, I mean, yeah. this is the advice these guys give you, you know. Right. But, um, but no. But Basically figure it out yourself. Right. Yeah. yeah. But they were great. I mean, yeah. just sort of having that as kind of an emotional crutch. I mean, it's not like Altman did that much for us, but he was always there for And it us. wouldn't have helped, I don't yeah. think, because it helps you forge your own identity yeah, when absolutely. you don't always have somebody to go to but, and get the, mm-hmm. and get the right answers. You yeah. have to figure out the right answers exactly. for yourself. And it's also and like having Mickey in your corner, though, too. Because, you know, you, got, you, you have to have the skills, yeah. but you got to have that voice, and you know, I still know this guy. You know, yeah. it's like, I still have this guy. Mervis, you can eat thunder and crap That's lightning. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> get exactly. out there. Yeah, and a lot of the, the the longer conversations I had with him were actually when we finished the film, you know, and then I was then I learned all the secrets. And right. Well, now you're kind of in the stuff. skulls yeah. a little bit. Yeah, exactly. You, you yeah. wrap the movie. And he yeah. gave you notes and stuff. What? Did he give you notes uh, on the film on at the all? Film? No, not really. No. He's like, yeah. It's, yeah it's okay. Fine. Ramis yeah, was fine. like more Bill Murray. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but anyway, when we had the idea for Slam Dance, you know, there were um, a lot of the other filmmakers were really nervous. They're like, oh no, we're going to get blacklisted. Should we do this? Should we not do this? We'll really? get I guess that happens, right, at film festivals. Wow. Is if yeah. you enter your, your film in one festival, then all the other festivals get pissed off exactly. and say, well, fine, you have your festival. You're not coming here. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, people were worried that, oh, we're never going to get into Sundance again. I'm like, dude, you just didn't get into Sundance already. You're right. not going to get, you're not going to make another film. So right. You got nothing to freaking lose. There's no here, double right? jeopardy. <laughs> so yeah, so um, so Dana called up uh, Robert Altman and Bob and, and said, you know, hey, we have this idea for for Slam Dance, and we we're kind of worried, is it going to piss off, you know, Redford? Is it going to piss off Sundance? And Altman thought about it for a minute, and he said, eh, fuck him. Well, and we we're awesome. like, that's like good enough for us. Yeah. We're on, you know. Uh, and so you know, and we were like, you know, we've got Robert Altman's blessing, you know, the king. That's yeah. all you needed. That that's that great. is to this day, like uh, you know, we wear that on our sleeves. That's a great story. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. So, all right, let's let's get so it. I told you I was going to say fuck. Yeah. I know it's true, but it was like waiting for like it's like I gave you a free hit at me, and I'm just yeah. I'm bracing myself for you to hit me, and you're not doing it, and I'm like he's just going to tease me with this fuck that's Rope just hanging in the air the rest <laughs> yeah. of the night. <laughs> Um, so you, you have slammed as you created. And what interested me when I was uh, stalking you is this whole thing with the Oscars about the musical cast. Yeah. I, I want to, if you can elaborate on that a little sure, bit. Sure, yeah. So uh, f- so a few years later, I make this film called uh, Open House, which was a real estate musical, because why wouldn't it be? <laughs> and, um, and it was just a silly little real estate musical. Uh, you know, we, it had some nice people. And Sally Kellerman, another mm-hmm. Open alum, was in it. Uh, Anthony Rapp, who'd been in Rent. So, some interesting people. We played at a few festivals. And it did well. People liked it. We showed it to distributors. They liked it and then said, yeah, we don't know what to do with it. Yeah. I'm like, I, it's a real estate boom, and there's a billion people in India who like musicals. I don't know. Maybe sell it to them, <laughs> no. but, you know, whatever. No. So I was in, like, this perpetual limbo that a lot of filmmakers find themselves in. And so, like all good Hollywood stories, one day I'm depressed and walking out of the proctologist's office, and I get a, <laughs> like and I get a call from my friend... Um, uh, Ariana, she says she's now the head of IFC Films. At the time, she was the head of acquisitions at Miramax. Yeah. Like, oh, my goodness, Miramax is finally going to pick up the film. 
And she goes, no, what are you kidding me? I, there's no way in hell we're going to pick up that piece of crap. You know? I was like, well, why are you calling me just to taunt me? And she says, no, 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 Dan, have you ever heard about this Oscar category called Best Original Musical? And I said, Best Original Musical? That's crazy talk. I've never heard of such a thing. And she says, no, 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 it's a real category that the Academy has. They've just never activated it. I said, what do you mean activated it? And she says... Well, the rules say like that... Old, in, like Ultron? Yeah, yeah. Just, like, activate yeah. Him? Yeah. So crazy. she says in any given year, the rules say that if there are five original musicals, then they activate the category, three of them get nominated, and one of them wins an Oscar. And I thought, well, three... You know, if you just get a nomination, you're going to get distribution, right? Yeah. That distributor wouldn't want to say, you know, Oscar nominee yeah. on the video box. So, um, but she said, but the catch is, is what's eligible. And this is why they've never activated the category. So you have to have a, first of all, it has to be a truly original musical. It can't have unoriginal uh, songs in it. So Moulin Rouge wouldn't have counted. Yeah, it Rock of Age is not making Rock the Rock of Ages oh, would not really? make it. Okay. Yeah, it can't be based on a stage play. It has to have at least five original songs wow. by the same songwriting team. And the songs have to, um, have to tell the story of, of, the, of the, the movie. They can't just be adornment, you know. So, so there's all these obscure rules, which is why it had never been activated. Anyway, but the reason she was calling me is Miramax thought they had two films that were going to be eligible that year, and they needed a couple patsies like me to fill out the category. Yeah. You uh, were Oswald. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'll be, I'll be Harvey's bitch. That's yeah. cool, you know. <laughs> this sounds like fun. Yeah. And um, so anyway, so th- but as it turned out, so our film was we just stumbled into it was completely eligible for the cat- for the category. Wow. We, we'd written enough songs, and you know the whole thing. Um, the two Merrimax films though were not eligible. Oh wow. Oh, for different funny. obscure reasons, but. So, That's but crazy. anyway, but this was such a great idea. We yeah. started looking for other films. So, Trey and Matt again; those yeah, guys yeah. come into the picture, and I kind of knew them through the Slam Dance connection. Um, they had just done uh, Team America: World Police, yeah, and which had six songs in it, and yeah. it was a Paramount film. And they were like all into it, and they were like, "Yeah, yeah, we're in, we're in, count us in." Um, Disney had an animated film called Home on the Range, which is kind of a flop for mm-hmm. them, but yeah. whatever. You know, Alan yeah. Menken had uh-huh. done the music, and he'd won like eight Lion Oscars, King, you know, in yeah. the in the nineties. Um, Neil Young, who I'd actually worked with, Neil was going to produce one of my other films earlier. Really? Yeah. Uh, wow. Neil had done an obscure film called Greendale that was kind of based on an album, but he actually shot the film before they recorded the album, so that was eligible. So that was four films with, with Open House. Um, but we needed one more film, and this is in August of '04, and the mm-hmm. deadline's December 1st at 5 p.m. <laughs> wow. So I said, fuck it, I'll just make another one. You know, how hard yeah. could it be, really, you know, to make a movie? <laughs> and um, so, and, and I said, but it is a little hard because I'm still on the festival circuit. I was getting ready to go to um, to a festival in Germany, in Oldenburg, Germany, uh, and I'm friends with a director there, a festival director, and I'm friends with the, uh, one of my actors who's going to come with me. So I said, well, you know what? Why don't we just shoot it in Germany? We're going there anyway. Uh-huh. Let's just make a German musical. How hard could that be? <laughs> and uh, so we were going to spend nine days in Germany. My God, and, Dan, you're and, not uh, planning a night out at bars. You're making movies. <laughs> yeah, <whatever. laughs> it's like, oh, while we're in Germany. While yeah, we're there. Why, <laughs> might as well. When I travel well, abroad, I don't leave the hotel room. You're out there making movies. <laughs> yeah, no, musicals. No. Musicals. They got, musicals. Yeah, they got to yeah, sing. can make a movie, but it had to be yeah. musical. Yeah. So we came up with like, an improvisable storyline and we wrote like a dozen songs just in case you know in the in the two weeks before the trip uh, oh and we had a layover in paris so we're like okay let's write a song for paris you know you know like you do yeah. like, like you, you do. do yeah and we, in terminal c hanging out at the o'gill o- mcgill yeah. drinking beer <laughs> exactly. the musical. so uh, anyway so we do this but you know but the trick was it couldn't be good because then it would take votes away from open house we needed our own patsy <laughs> so we had nine days to make a bad german That's musical awesome. you know it was like a real life like version the of the producers yeah. exactly oh, my God. so i mean for for example, we get the, we get to Germany and our, our, we're met by our German actress who'd been kind of assigned to us, you know, and wow. the Germans and they had, we had some big German rock stars and actresses, actors in it, and she said, "Oh, we are all very excited about this Oscar thing. We heard we we're all going to win Oscars," and uh, we're like, "Yeah, uh-huh. yeah." Uh-huh. <laughs> and um, she said, "There's only two problems." I said, "What?" She said, "Well, I can't improvise and I can't sing." I sounds said, like "You're Argo. perfect." Yeah. You know? oh, it sounds like Argo. God. Yeah, yeah no, it, 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 it kind of is. Amazing. Anyway, so we have all kinds of adventures with with pimps and and uh, S and M clubs. And and triathlons and just bizarre things in Germany. And, and we come back here, slap together a cut of the film, and, and at 4.55 p.m. on December 1st, we're running up the stairs of the Academy on, on, over on Wilshire. I don't know why the elevator didn't work or why we didn't. It's more dramatic. Yeah, it works. Yeah. Anyway, we're running yeah. up the stairs, and we, and we slap John the, Williams playing in the background. Yeah, exactly. yeah, we slap the DVD or the VHS or the Betamax, whatever it was at the time, you know, on the <laughs> yeah. desk. We say, here you go. Here's the fifth film. And they were like, oh, crap, you bastards you know we didn't think <laughs> anyone would be, you know, what kind of idiot makes a fifth film yeah. and i said well you haven't met this idiot before right. so 
I like, oh shit, now we have to take it to the Board of Governors. So three days later, they take it to the Board of Governors, and there's Tom Hanks, and there's the studio heads, and they're all in there, and they're like, what do you mean we have this category, best original musical? That's crazy talk. We've never heard of such it's a never thing. Never been activated. Yeah. It's never no been activated. No one pushed the button. Exactly. <laughs> and they're like, and they look at, you know, they're like, who are we going to give this Oscar to? You know, Trey and Matt, who showed up in dresses, hopped up on, you know, <laughs> acid the last time. There's no way they're going to give those guys an Oscar. Neil Young didn't show up the last time. He had been nominated for an Oscar, which was for a song for Philadelphia. Alan Menken, you know, the, the Disney film was yeah. a flop anyway. It wasn't his best work. And he already had eight Oscars. He's mm. got too many Oscars. You know? I like your odds here. Exactly. <laughs> I, I'm thinking pretty good, right? And then they look at me, and my, my two films are combined budgets didn't add up to the cost of an Oscar gift basket. There's no way they're going to give me an Oscar. <laughs> and one of them sucks, you know? So, um, I so really want to see the other one now. I, know, I yeah. want to watch so it. So they canceled the category. Oh, no. I know. Because right? they said no we can't way. let this guy win. Yeah, oh, exactly. Bastards. Oh, Those no bastards. Way. You know what? Dan Mervish affected change at the Oscars. Right? Well, exactly. True. So we oh, took God. the only thing we could take, which was Umbridge, and, um, <laughs> and a lot of it. So we got a lot of press. Reuters wow. picked up the story, ran all over the world, because everyone loves an Oscar story. And, you know, L.A. Times, Variety, Hollywood Reporter. And based on the press, we got distribution for Open House from a small company that then got bought out by the Weinstein Company, so ultimately became a Weinstein Company film, and in the back of the video box it says, from the film, the change the rules of the Academy Awards. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's you know, fantastic. That's there awesome. you go. There's your Oscar story. That's See, but this awesome. is crazy. Oh, gosh, shit, we, what, can, can we push it a little bit? Let's push it a little bit, because we have, we have... Oh, I could go on for... I know, I know. Yeah, we, yeah, we, have, we have. You probably have other things. Dan Mervish here, and he's telling stories that are making... Uh, holy shit. And you can follow Dan on uh, on Twitter. Dan, yeah. your, phone, your phone's about to blow up. It's mm -hmm. at Dan Mervish, M-I-R-V-I-S-H. I and wanted to ask this guy, you... Great story. Um, before, before, we, uh, before we have to go to break, about the, the film Between Us, real mm -hmm. quick. Yes, yes, that's the current film opening it's June it's 21st. It's awesome. Nationwide-ish. Mm -hmm. You, awesome. You've seen it? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's yeah. awesome. I How are you see, right. you've seen that? You've I'm seen special. Pacific Rim? Or I'm you... special. So, Can I ask you what's what? the new Star Wars movie like? Am I going to like it? No. <laughs> Wait, so, no, you will. It's JJ. So, <laughs> Brittany, you had a couple questions you wanted to ask about the film. I have one big question. Were you as uncomfortable directing it as I was watching it? It's I was so more so. I lost 10 awkward. pounds dire it's so directing and put on 20 awkward. pounds on the festival circuit. <laughs> Can you, I love this. Can you give Schmoda a little breakdown of kind of what the film's about? So Two couples yelling and throwing things at each other. That's it. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. With uh, Julia Stiles, Tay mm -hmm. Diggs, who takes his shirt off a couple times. Yes, right? he did. Yes, <laughs> that was for you. And um, uh, Melissa George, uh, you know, from Alias mm -hmm. and 30 Days a Night. Yeah. And uh, David Harbour, uh, who's on the newsroom now, but he was in the original play. And, uh, yeah, it's just powerhouse acting. I mean, yeah. it's, so it's called it's, Between it, Us, and so how, how can, how can Schmobel catch the film? So it's playing in limited release um, June 21st. There's actually a couple cities playing it the week before, like in Portland it's playing the week before. But June 21st it opens L.A., Denver, it's a bunch of places in Florida and a few other places. Also, uh, if you are in a hotel and normally watch porn, I think it's going to be on <laughs> LodgeNet. Why do you look at me when you say that? I don't know. I'm, You're looking at him the whole time, then no, you hit no, the porn. Of a sudden, and then right over I here. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I you had a remote going, control already in your hands. So ready to go. I have something else in my hands. So uh, yeah, and then I, and then I think if you still miss it, like a month or so later, it's on VOD okay. and DVD and PC. Good, good, good. It's called Between Us. Between, Between Us. us. Uh, yes. Wildman, you, you want to get in here real quick? Ask a question for Mr. Mervish. No, I I, I watched the movie today. Oh, uh, we got to watch um, it. Really, really enjoyed it, and okay. I didn't know that it was a stage play, but it, it totally makes sense. Good. But you shot it. What I really liked was there was a lot of establishing shots with the city, and yeah. uh, I'm from Pittsburgh, and I love when people do shots of cities that aren't, you know, the typical New York, L.A. kind yeah. of thing, and I love that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and also, you shot it so much that because it's such like it's a heavy dialogue, very like like you said, mm -hmm. just like it hits you. It's beautifully uh, awkward. Yeah. Beautifully you know, awkward. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. 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 Someone yeah. write that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the kid will do the it. Kid, the kid will do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, you know. It on, it honestly felt like it was one of those movies where the camera had to be up in their face. And yeah. is oh, that yeah. when, when you yeah. started? Is that was that a main goal? You yeah, made creme brulee, my favorite dessert, uh, feel awkward. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it's funny you mentioned that. I mean, we we specific, I worked with a great cinematographer, Nancy Schreiber, ASC. You know, she kicks ASC. You know, <laughs> and. Um, funnier on paper but uh <laughs> and but yeah we specifically said okay let's kind of start the movie kind of in more wider shots with longer lenses and then as we go in we literally push in and, and we were especially those scenes towards the end they're in a new york apartment which were actually filmed about four blocks from here at the redbury hotel um but uh uh but i mean there physically wasn't 
space in the apartment, so you have to be real close yeah. with short lenses as opposed to... But then we tried to distinguish that in the Midwestern house scenes to still get close-ups, with a, but with a long lens by farther away. And so you get... It, you it definitely, feels... It's you a different kind of feel. Yeah. Um, you got to have a good well, makeup girl on set or well, something like that. Yeah, you really do. Yeah. So, Shmoba, make or sure guy. you check out Between Us. And we have Dan Mervis is here. Dan, before you go, I want to let you know. So you're gonna, we're getting a lot of good tweets here. One of them from uh, at Georgie McCann, at GC McCann Movies, who says, These stories on the Shmoba's No Podcast are just great, and I thank you so much for creating Slam Dance and helping the little guy. Oh, that's great. That was 140 140- characters uh, <laughs> well yeah it was it was uh, so, no, thank but you very much yeah there's again we have a lot of aspiring directors so uh, your story there it's going off the board they love it and we would love for you to come back and visit us if you're around please uh please yeah, do i'm not going anywhere. come hang right. man <laughs> dan mervis please check out his new film between us We're very happy to have him some of the best stories we've had on this show and i can't wait to uh to hear more of them we'll come back he's probably soon. gonna film a musical in the next it before right. he comes back <laughs> to no, so. on the elevator down you know what's going on i've got right. a whole musical it's esther williams died really today did you hear oh that? no really, really? Yeah. Break, you're just the and you know we tried news. to cast her in open house Oh, really? Yeah, oh, wow. she wouldn't work for that. Wow. Money. Holy crap. Well, and uh, once again, the Twitter handle is at Dan Mervish. That's the man's name. Yes. Tweet him and let him know how great his stories about film and or the film community at are. At Between Us Movie. At, at Between Us Movie. Dan, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you, guys. Well. I'm thank so you. glad you got a chance to see me. Yeah. All right, guys. So uh, after the break, we'll be back. The uh, the Wild Man TV segment will premiere. We will also we have a lot more things to talk about in, uh, in in the movie world. So we'll be back right after the break. Schmoes No Movies, Christian Harlow, Brittany Wallach, Mark Ellis, and the whole crew. This, Ellis, you look—you look a lot. You look tanner. <laughs> yeah, you look... But out in the sun, there. <laughs> is that your Ellis? Ellis? Listen now, this is the Ellis impression. Did you go this to the is sun my Ellis. Okay, do it. Do an impression. Of, let's see. This is uh, oh, we're doing man, a celebrity, imp- celebrity impression game. This is your Ellis. All right, so you're gonna be—you're gonna be playing the part of Ellis. All right, so guys, we're here with Mark Riley, Brittany Wallach, myself. Mark, Hi, everyone. Mark Ellis. Um, so Mark, what? Hey, you... Christian, it's me, Mark. <laughs> you got—you got the volume down. So uh, what? What did? Uh, what? First of all, what did you think about Dan, Mark? Dan Mervish. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. God, that sounds pretty it. good. You you it. You Dan Mervish is a master. The guy did slam dance. He's a genius. You gotta make a sports reference. I swear to you, he is the 1979 <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers <laughs> to the movie industry. He created a genre. This guy is genius. If I was a parasite at the Sundance Film <laughs> Festival, I would consider myself lucky. You gotta, Baby Carrot. Yeah, you, 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 got, you gotta throw in. You gotta throw in. A, I gotta tell you. You know, I gotta. I gotta tell you, Christian. Uh, I gotta tell you, Christian. The guy's the best guest we've had since Maria Menounos' husband. Uh, so, so at, at Hawaiian Beef Stew, good lord, is that Mark Ellis or Jerry Seinfeld? Uh, it's John Lovitz. Uh, uh, yeah. So they, did, I, did I miss? Did I miss Wild Man TV? No, you did not. It's going to be happening soon. Uh, they're talking to Dan Mervish, who, by the way, dude, killed it. That guy. Great what, story. Guy. Holy shit! We had him for like three hours. Yeah. Uh, oh wait, the real Mark Ellis is now entered the building. Uh, uh, so you, uh, I was you're, high with Dan. You, we about? yeah, we were talking. Well, your uh, your doppelganger had stepped in for a second. There's an impression. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah the, the the former champion of celebrity dating impression game uh, came in here and did an impression of you. It was terrible. Was Alf here? Uh, no, no, no. All right, so Mark, we were talking about of my husband. What the hell is this? <laughs> we we're talking about Dan Mervish and how great that guy's stories were. Yeah, That's after amazing. you were talking about me and my husband, <laughs> huh? I just got a tweet from from the Time Warden. He said that Josh McCuga's impression of Ellis fifty one fifty husband is amazing. <laughs> husband, I don't know. Yeah. By yeah. the way, that's Rocket Raccoon. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's. That's so, badass. He's badass. badass where, right? He's adorable. He's badass. Where is Where is Ken? And I was the interns? talking to Mervish. That's why I was don't late, know. because Mervish yeah. is out there with, uh, by yeah. the elevator with Kenny. Kenny's hitting him up for some free swag, and uh, okay. uh, it, the guy's stories are just incredible. It's like you started this little underground film festival, yeah. and now, and I love that it's in Park City. And it's at it's pretty much right, right across, next. Yeah, it's the Sundance, so yeah. it's just like they're just staring down the big boys. It's good yeah. to know that the people that he it. features there keep a relationship with him too. That yeah. it's not just about making it big and forgetting the little guy. Okay. Can you, hey, can you turn your uh, computer down? Hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? 
Hey guys, it's Georgie. What's up, Georgie? So I know. I mean, I read your tweet. Tweet, obviously. So you were pretty uh, taken back, uh, back by that guy. How, how did you feel about Dan's stories? Oh man, what a what a great great storyteller. I mean, now I just gotta go watch his damn movies. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. I mean, because those those stories are amazing. Yeah, he's he's. You, uh, you gotta get him on for longer. No, no, we're gonna bring him on for longer for sure, man. He, his stories were awesome. Um, it, it was a lot of fun. I mean, he's just one of those guys. Thank you. He was just one of those guys that when you listen to him speak, it's like you just want to hear what's coming next. Because mm-hmm. it's, like, it's like it's the more and more of like, oh, wait, you met who? Yeah. That did it's what? like a tip of the iceberg. Yeah. You know there's more to that. He's always a great director, too, because just the way he unfolds the story, it's yeah. a perfect pace. It never takes too long to get there. There's fun little nuggets yeah. along the way. He's it, It's really fun to have him as a guest. And I genuinely else. like Between Us. I, mean, I really mean that. So yeah. it's good to watch. That was cool. All right, George, before I let you go, what do you think of the – what do you think of Sh- Schmo Kid or Shoesy pants. What team are you on? Like, like uh, Twilight. Yo, Sh- Smoke Kid knows his shit, and Shoesy Pants paid seven dollars for a, <laughs> a, a fucking sport. Uh, get, get Shoesy Pants the fuck out of here. Keep the Italian. Uh, right, well, you like the Italian. Uh, All right, thank Georgie. Poor Shoesy. All right, Georgie calls in. All right, poor Shoesy. You're that's the one right. that brought it up. All right, now he feels I, I'm bad. Keeping, yeah, I'm, I'm bad. keeping Shoesy busy. Don't worry. Okay. He's, he's listen, doing good. Listen, I shit on Shoesy as far as being on this show on the, on the website. He is incredible. He yes, really he is. is. But uh, he sucks as an intern. All right. Um, <laughs> All right, now we're very excited here, guys, and a lot. It looks like Schmoville's excited too. A brand new segment tonight. We're about to do it in a second here. It is going to be called. It's called the. It's called Wildman TV with our own the Wildman Josh Makuga. We got an intro for it. Johnny Ice, you ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> Paging Johnny Ice. Nice. Oh, this is great. Coming in hot here on a Thursday night and on the Toad Hop Network. I want to thank you guys so much for uh, having me in here doing talking TV because uh, Christian and I were talking about this the other day. Mark knows I watch a shit ton of TV. It's Just almost like a problem. Way too much television. When somebody asks me if I've seen a show, I reference something in the show TV. to see if they're an actual thing. <laughs> right, 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 right. Like, hey, so you're an elitist yeah, as I'm well. Like, hey, stupid. Yeah, I've watched it. Okay, I get it. Right, so what do we got today, Josh? We got three stories in TV. This is how, so the segment's going to work like this. We got three stories, and we're going to talk about the first story. You're going to bring up the story, what you heard, what you liked. Right. Then we will comment on that, and then the second and the third, and that'll sure. be the segment. I was going to go into Game of Thrones, but I figure we're already over it. Yeah. We've gotten there. I, you guys talk about Game of Thrones. I'm already a little disappointed. Uh, today. Dis- disappointed? No, I'm not disappointed. Not disappointed. I love the episode. Okay. Finally, they but showed some action. Disappointed in what happened in the events. Yeah, Got because... It. Okay, well, that's all we need to talk. Okay. Yeah, I didn't get okay, to that point. Don't spoil it. Okay. Um, today, a uh, big announcement from FX. They la- they're going to launch FX, FXX, and FXM. Uh, <laughs> okay. All, Sorry. There's three different channels that FX is launching now. Okay. okay. On cable? On cable. All right. Okay. FXX. You guys killed his new segment with comedy. FXXXX. Yeah. I would be into right. that's okay. on the page. Right. Okay. FXX is where the league, uh, always sunny. Okay, um, they're all going to go. FX is now going to be pretty much all their drama shows. So Sons of Anarchy, uh, Justified. They're going to start going into sort of like a more of a, a T. It's going to be like TNT, TBS, USA. Really? Kind of right. hmm. Okay. So FXX is going to be <laughs> it's still funny. Yeah, and yeah. The, and the logos are all going to pretty much look the same. It's going to be like FX and like a little X above, and then yeah. FXM. Right, so an FXM is going to kind of just be like um, they're going to show more uh, like we could be on there. They would show yeah. like a Schmoes No Movies podcast yeah. on there. It'd sort of be like an NBC Sports Network okay. kind of a thing. Okay. So uh, the first show that they're going to debut on there is called Chosen C H O Z E N. Uh-huh. Oh, that's like street. I yeah. love yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. exactly what it is. It's, Thank you. It's no. Danny McBride's oh, okay. show, and it's about a gay white rapper, and uh, voiced by Bobby Moynihan from Saturday Night Live. And uh, you got, like, all the other voices in there are people that we know from all the Danny McBride stuff, produced by Danny McBride's new Rough House or whatever. I think it's called Rough House, something okay. like that. Uh, it's not Gary Sanchez. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and it's about a gay white rapper, and they're basically going to... Uh, obviously a cartoon. It's cartoon. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, animated. And uh, they're basically going to, like, focus on commentating on, like, the rap industry, gay gays versus non-gays. It's I guess it's supposed to be... Hysterical but smart, funny, which doesn't really equate when I hear Danny McBride. All right, well, all right, but so he look, is hysterical. He's funny. He makes up for yeah, if, yeah. if there's no intelligence, it's okay because he's that funny. Right. All right, so how? 
At first, when you start saying this, I'm like, ah, that's too much. I'm is like, this too, all the prank, by the X's. way? No, this is real. This is in between F double X and then shows no, 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 in a cartoon no, no. starring Dan McBride as Gateway Rapper. It's not it's Vin real. Diesel's no. franchise, F double X. No, but you, not the that. raccoon you, is the easiest story to swallow. <laughs> no, right. When you brought that up, though, initially, I'm going, ah, that might be too much. I don't know if we're going to be able to deal with it. that network and that one. I mean, if we're going to get lost. But then when you start to think about it, when you brought up TNT USA, Although USA kind of sucks, but yeah. but regardless, the, 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 model, the model was, yeah. was so I'm thinking that it makes sense. Maybe they're moving Sons Anarchy away from the comedy because they want to yeah. be specific to that. So I guess that you know, so FXX is their their demographic is 18 to 34, right? So and they're going to do that, but uh, they are going to get the sexual references a uh, ton of times. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, maybe they could have changed FX two or whatever. Maybe they don't want to do the ESPN thing. But all right, all right. Yeah. So that's that's story number one. That's a, that's a, that's, a, that's a pretty good one. I'm, I mean, I'm, our boys are on the league. We have friends yeah. that are on the league. Yeah. Uh, they go to this new channel um, with this, and Always Sunny too. You know, my bu- my buddy directed three episodes of Always Sunny this year. Uh-huh. They're not sure if the audience. It's sort of like when you when you make Schmo Plus, right? Do we think that the audience is going to make that transition? Do we think they're going to go to FXX? Gotcha. Well, it um, helps if they have a built in show, a built in yeah, fan base, exactly. like something like the League. Well, let's get know? some tweets in from Schmoville about this story and uh, and and what you think of so far the TV. So far, it's very positive, uh, st- very positive responses for Wildman TV. Good uh, intro music. At oh, Alan right. Cumbus White writes in the Wildman, great segment. Though needs to get his facts together. Uh, what? Uh, Oh. Parentheses, Uh-oh. parentheses, whatever it's called. Ha ha, but he <laughs> loves the stories. All right, so what do you, what do you got at number two? Second story. Uh, two, um, the uh, HBO just uh, announced another Danny McBride kind of thing um, that Eastbound and Down is done after this season. Okay, this is final season. Yeah, okay. but the better thing is that Hello Ladies, is they, they got the green light for Hello Ladies, which What's is that? Stephen Merchant's series about finding love in Los Angeles. Stephen Merchant is Ricky Gervais's agent okay. in Extras. He's his producing oh. partner. Okay. Really tall, He's the British tall, dude, really funny. Dude. Awesome. Okay. And it's basically like, hello, it's like, hello, ladies. It's me. I'm British and tall. Look at me talk about things that are, like, sexy. And then and L.A. girls are like, this dude's a, a moron. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and so it's that, that, that British kind of, like, tongue-in-cheek humor that I'm going to look for, which, okay. I mean, I was never a fan of the British office, Strike me down from hell. I didn't. I just. I'm not an office guy in general. I don't like working in them. I don't like watching shows about them. (laughs) Whatever. But Stephen Merchant is coming to L. A. to kind of poke fun. I think at the stupid girls that we have to deal with. Oh, they're killing me right now. Now, I'd love to see somebody lampoon. Yeah. What's the difference between like this show and what's that one with that Joey from Friends is on? The one uh, Uh, Joey uh, uh, (laughs) episodes. Episodes. What's the difference? Episodes. First thing I thought of. Episodes is actually about the writing and producing of a of a television show. Okay. And so it's it pokes fun at Hollywood. Okay, so this in is general, like this is more poking fun at Los Angeles and, and the women people. In Los is people it a conceit yeah. where where the, do they know that there's a camera on them, or is it yeah. is it a is sitcom? It same format? No, no, no. It's it's. Uh, I mean, I think they say that it's real life but scripted. Okay, I wonder if right. that's only going to appeal to people who live here and get the jokes, though. Like, I would hate for them to that's be a such point. a niche, like, yeah. oh, the 405 was so busy today. Yeah. But, you know, like, someone's in Cleveland's like, what? I you think know? Entourage yeah. crossed over. So yeah, I think that's that true. if yeah. you can not only buy the Entourage thing, but have a British dude doing it, yeah, then, that's then. True. I think that goes back to what Altman told Mervish, too. It's all about the casting. Yeah. It yeah. really is all yeah. about the casting. Again, well, let's hope it's like not all said, inside jokes about right. just living here. Well, let's, uh, but again, the funny thing is to bring up an inside joke and not going too much into the review. Sometimes inside jokes work. Like, we just saw. Well, this is the this end. Is the end. And there's a lot of. Mm. It, I, I, see, you think it's a lot of inside jokes. I don't think it's as many LA inside jokes as it is. No, 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 no. The, I don't guys, think it's LA inside jokes. Yeah. I think it's inside jokes on them. Like stuff like if you're not familiar with them, like it's with an. Their in, brand what of I, what I said, well, no, no. What I said was an, it's an inside joke that I felt like I was on the inside gotcha. because I know everything about what they were cracking on, like like gotcha. Seth Rogen's laugh and the fact that like when when you make fun of people in, in the, <laughs> yeah when you make fun of people yeah. in the news and some people mm-hmm. rumored like F- F- James Franco might be gay. Like, yeah. it was all stuff that I had read about in tabloids and stuff like that. So I felt like I was on the inside. Gotcha. That's what I meant But you can that. also, you don't have to be one of the leaders of the Schmoes No Empire to get these inside <laughs> jokes. No, because, <laughs> but, but, dude, like, you're right. You're a celebrity. So, you, you know, and but you can watch this in Iowa and still laugh. Oh, people think James Franco's gotcha. gay. That's, but here's, that's here's the Because the trailers, I think, say otherwise. To me, as a yeah. casual viewer, it looks otherwise. It looks like it's all inside jokes. Yeah. I've been to Iowa, to and they're very hip and modern. They have a Pier 1. And, but that was my fault. I, I, flipped away from, I flipped away from TV. Let's go back to that. But here's the thing. Is that one, there's two polarizing things in the show, and you make yeah. a good point. One is England, yeah. and, the, and the accent, and two is just LA centric stuff. Yeah. Now, the funny thing is, is that when I go, if you know, I go and tell jokes in Pittsburgh, I go and tell jokes out of town or whatever, mm-hmm. and I do the LA girl voice, it still hits, right? You know, and so the fact that <laughs> what like, does that voice sound like again, Josh? 
Like, oh my god. Oh. Um, oh. Like, I went to this like laundromat and there was a homeless person in there oh like, asking god. for a change, and I was like, I don't carry change. Do you? Take oh my a god, card? he was gross. <laughs> <laughs> and take a credit card. Oh my god. I think uh, I was at a party the other night with that girl. I'm sure awful. Was. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, guys, did my uh, ex wife we... just come in here? Yeah, she was. Riley just woke up. The beast is out. Nasty. Mr. So, all right, Mr. Mr. Wildman. So, what's what's our last story of, of the segment? This one I was I was super excited about. Uh, there's a show in Canada called Taxi 22. If you guys want to find 22. it, if you want to find it, you can uh, find it either on Hulu Plus or you can find it on Netflix. It's not too hard to find. Uh, it's by uh, this uh, Canadian comic called Patrick Yord, and it's hysterical. Okay, and it's ju- it's basically like Archie Bunker in a cab. And so Gandolfini's production company optioned it here in the States. And it was set up at HBO, obviously. I mean, Gandolfini has carte blanche yeah. there. Uh-huh. Uh, it didn't go. Uh, they wanted him to star in it. He really wasn't into starring in it. He, he kind of wanted to just produce it. Uh, so now it's at CBS. And CBS gave it the green light this week. And they're trying mm-hmm. to cast it. And they're not sure. Like, I love the idea of an Archie What's Bunker. The premise, the premise no. is just a guy in a, a New York City cab driver mm-hmm. that's off color. And that's his. And it's his life. Oh, and that sounds okay. like a CBS vehicle. That's yeah. That's see, what I'm yeah. saying. How off color can you be on a network? Or because here, like here, look, here's the thing though. I still think there's this thing that people think. Oh, if I hit network, I've made it. And it's like cable right You've now. You've made it for three weeks, that's and then the it gets the look, 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 look at Bonnie Somerville, who's a huge uh, friend of the show. We, you know, we love and her. Golden Boy was fantastic. Okay, Golden, but Golden Boy could have been so much better if it was on cable. Yeah. They, they they weren't able to. I mean, there were certain things happening in that show that had they pushed. If it had it not been on CBS and had it been on a cable network, you could have seen more grit, more realistic, and. Something like this that you're talking about, you want to see this guy get raw. Like Archie Bunker now would be cursing up a fucking oh, storm, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, yeah. It, you know, cable, I mean, uh, network television scares me in general. Well, I think what's going to probably happen, which I'm hoping is going to happen, is that CBS is going to shoot it. They're going to see that it would probably and maybe sell it to an FX or it gets picked up mm-hmm. somewhere else on a cable Where network. Well, aren't Where CBS and Showtime in cahoots? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you'd because if you pitch at HBO and they don't like it, you don't go to network. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a totally yeah. different show. Um, you know? Yo, you're right. So there's a couple questions that we have from Schmoville. And again, this is another thing. If you have some questions about TV, he's not going to get a lot of a, a, all of them, but he might get some. So here's a question. And the wild man think on the fly. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's some <laughs> question. That's, I think that should be a good good follow-up to the end of this segment. Sure. If you have any questions on TV that you're curious about, maybe wild man knows, maybe he doesn't. Here's one. At Koopa Troopa has a question. Any Koopa. news on <laughs> a happy endings being picked up on a new network? Uh, yeah, they're, uh, my buddies at ABC.com. Um, we're, we were talking about happy endings because that is a fantastic show. Yeah. It's hysterical. It's a single camera, so it works for me. It's sort of like New Girl, but it didn't get the kind of backing that Fox gave New yeah, Girl. Yeah. Uh, they're talking uh, to either TBS or USA. I don't think it would really thrive on USA, but I think it would kill on yeah. TBS. Uh, and that's another show that might get picked up by an FXX. Okay, it's something like that. So maybe. So it's, it's not. It's funny. not. So it's not dead. It's not dead. It's okay. definitely not dead. All right, guys. So again, how about how about how do we feel about uh, Wild Man t- Wild Man uh, TV? Is Wild Man TV going to get picked up? Let me, up yeah. hey, yeah. get picked up, let, me so. uh, let me just Ken end, says end no. each segment with. Uh, yeah, let's take it out with the with the music though. I know. I threw it on you, Johnny. But we'll, yeah. There right, we go. go. Last segment. To the point, if you're not watching the show, you're stupid. Watch House of Cards on Netflix. It's 13 episodes of pure brilliance. Kevin Spacey at his finest, and Robin Wright Penn as the sexiest villain on television. Josh McCuga, Wild Man TV. Well done, sir. All right. I like that. I like when we get new segments, get the crew uh, doing some more stuff. And, and what, I, what I was talking to with the Mild, Wild Man as well was that he should be doing something like this on Schmo Plus. And uh, by the way, you like guys. A TV, uh, a, yeah. a TV show on the web. We have a couple things we're working on for Schmo Plus. We're going to start doing, like, how you and I do consistent stuff every week on our show. Every day, really. Yeah. Every day we have new stuff. We're going to start doing that. If you go to YouTube.com slash Schmo Plus and make sure you subscribe there, Finstock's going to have the Finstock Initiative. God knows what that's oh, going to entail. Uh, Ken Knapsack's going to be Ken, one regular reviewer of that. Yeah, Knapsack will, <laughs> and Knapsack will have some stuff. And Makuga's <laughs> going to start doing some TV stuff that you can catch there. But I bring up Finstock for a reason. Because I wanted to talk to Ken you just took a long pull off of Sailor Jerry. And uh, just yeah. going to be thinking about... Well, here, here's something I, I thought of the other day. I was with Ellis, and I... And I As you usually are. Yeah, and I was... And in my car was a leash for my old dog. 
Okay, and it was this red leash, and I go, "This is depressing." Was it a Tazzy leash? He's not dead. No, no, no. Oh god, because you said old dog. Getting my sister-in-law. Um, so, oh Oh, wait, is that where your dog went? Showing my sister. I was gonna. I was gonna ask you what happened to the dog. (laughs) It's a long long question. A a long story. I'll talk. It it, it involved the baby. He just keeps around to remind me. Like six months. I'm like, did he have a dog? Did I dream that? Josh, the intern, and Bobby Finstock are gonna have a Rocky trivia. Contest. Ooh. Yeah. And the loser, the winner will walk the loser around with the leash around the grove and oh. while they interview people about movies. Oh, and either wow. Josh and Turner will be walked or around the grove. Or everyone yeah. in their path. Well, Finstock, yeah. Finstock yeah. said we'll get kicked out in five minutes. Yeah, it's, easy. It's against the law. Yeah. Protected by 602 trespassing, penal code 4124. You're so full yeah. of shit, so you, but you you're think, not. You think they're going to get Will they kick yeah, them you out can, of the group? Did you really quote it correctly? Wait, why? Like, That's number? LA Municipal Code 4124D. What's the code? Private property open to the public. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, well, the, I don't the understand. The leash is illegal? So they can't, or? He no, can't walk filming. the leash? No, but, oh. what, but what if your family, like your family, take, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. At the, that's what it's going to look like. It's going to be a flip people camp. that almost every day. You're a creep. You're a dick. What do you got? JTI. What do you got? Like Rocky, I'm going to walk. Bobby Finstock around like Buckus. But what, oh, like he's done. Oh, what nice. I'm also saying is it adds a bit of danger and it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be fun. Maybe we'll have the Schmo Kid follow because him around. Because it's not at your mall. Yeah, yeah, right. You're not missing that. Yeah. Schmo Kid knows what, what it's all about. All right. So, um, anyway. <laughs> That's going to be exciting. I, but who, I mean, nobody really wins in that because even if you're seen walking another human being right? around the grove, it's not like you're picking up hot ass. You know? No, it's true. But it'd be, it'd be <laughs> hey, girls, you like my dog? <laughs> it, it's going to be funny. Even, yeah, even Finstock just tweeted in immediate kick out. <laughs> yeah, that sounds so, like a weird anime convention I've yeah. been to. I might have seen one or two people walking around leashes in my time. In my time, it's be a weird exciting. anime convention, aren't they all? Let's take a, let's take a phone call from Schmoville. But before, can you turn your computer down? But before we before we take the phone call from Schmoville, what I want to um, coming up after the break, there's two things that we're going to talk about. We're going to have we're going to be playing the game. Which I'm very excited mm-hmm. to be playing again. Riley is going to be defending his title. He's won like two or three in a row. That bastard. Um, so he'll be defending that title, and then we're also, or maybe before, or after, we don't know yet. What times? What times the phone call? Um, so Nine thirty-five. So we'll take a break earlier, so we have more time. Okay. After, okay. Yeah. So then, Devin Faraci from Badass Digest. I did um, Screen Junkies with him a few, like a month or two ago, and we got into it about Spider-Man Three. And he loves Spider Man Three and I thinks don't. it's a great movie. And I and I said, look, you know, opinions are opinion. That's great. But would you come on the podcast and defend why you like it? So I think he's going to come. Mm-hmm. And he's a very smart guy. He's a great critic. And he's going to come on and he's going to talk about his points and why he likes Spider Man Three and what. So we can go and everybody can kind of go off his points. We'll let him say his piece, and then I'm sure Schmoville, if you agree with him, disagree, you tweet in, let us know, and we'll do the same. You're being uh, you're being very benevolent about this. Why so I, far? I hate the fucking movie, but I'm gonna say. I, 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 but I, 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 I'm know. interested to see what he has to say. I've mm-hmm. never I've never met anyone that could defend it. He's look. He's a smart guy. Um, his points I didn't agree with, but I thought they were well put together. Um, the I was kind of I was kind of wearing the blinders after I saw Spider Man Three because mm-hmm. I sat right in the front row and and I was just looking wow. up to the movie the whole time. So and I you got to saw see... you saw his uh, his emo haircut real close, just <laughs> yeah. real up and, and greasy. I saw yeah. it in Silver yeah. Lake in the place. Yeah, yeah. All right, <laughs> All right let's say so. You're, hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Hey, what's up? Schmoes. Yeah. What's up, man? Who, Someone's having a party. A party. What's up? <laughs> who, who, who we got? It's the first time. Finally made a beer. It's Landry. What's up? Hey, Landry. So what's hey, up, dude? What do you Lando, got? Lando. Lando here. Talk about anything you want. You can talk about the Rocky contest. You can talk about uh, the Schmo Kid. You can talk about Wild Man TV. What do you got? I got nothing. I mean, anything Anything you want to ask me? All right, have you been? I want to ask you. I, I want to ask you. Where are you right now? Because it sounds like you're in the mystery van from Scooby Doo. <laughs> Drunk. Am I warm here? Drunk. Uh, that's exactly where I am. Nice, I, I love know. it. So, Landry, let me. Let, sorry, so have Landry, you been, do you want your own TV segment on the Snow's No <laughs> podcast? <laughs> I would be an honor. Okay, good. So, um, do you? So, have you been listening to the Josh. show all night? I'm just Josh. Yeah, I have. Okay, all right. So, for first, first things first. So how how did you feel about uh, Wild Man TV? Um, that Ozzy Osbourne's not a bad artist. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Landry, you're on the spot. You gone? Oh, we lost him. What happened uh, to him? He, oh, I, think, I guess he didn't like it. I think he fell over drunk. <laughs> so let's take one more call. We're going to take one more, one more call from Schmoville, and then we're going to go to break. We'll come back. We'll play the game. Talk to Devin Faraci. Hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Hey, it's Jordan Rowe. Hey, hey Jordan. What's up, dude? So uh, hey, we have a couple things that have been going on tonight. What do you got? Yeah, I've been watching... So out of the, out of the things we've talked about so far, whether it be the Rocky contest, we got the new intern, we got uh, Makuga, we got Wildman TV, Dan Mervish, Dan Mervish. What do you want to talk what about? What do you want to talk about? 
Uh, like Dan Mervish, is that his name? Yeah. Loved, loved him on the show. Yeah, I mean, I'm an aspiring filmmaker, so it was really cool to hear him come on. I actually wanted to just quickly ask, um, don't know if you guys know this or not, but VHS 2, the horror movie, just came on to iTunes today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just got done watching it earlier tonight. How do you feel about you it? What's your thoughts on it? it What's your thoughts on it? Um, you know, I, I liked it. It's I didn't think it was as serious or trying to be as scary as the first one was, but um, it's fun. They got the guy who did uh, The Raid Redemption to do one of the shorts, and his was just insane gory. So, are, are you in a dungeon? Cool. I hear spooky music no, no, in the that's, background. That's, that's, that's oh, us. That's damn. us. That's <laughs> I was like, us. I wish no. you were in a dungeon. No, no, are you that's, in that's, a dungeon right now? No, Jordan's the nicest kid, but he's always locked in a dungeon. Yeah, for some reason. Uh, Jordan, he's got these candles everywhere. <laughs> yeah, Jordan, Jordan Rowe is our good buddy. Jordan, when you plug your YouTube channel before we let you go. Yeah, youtube.com slash Ronet, R-O-W-E-N-E-T. All right, Jordan. Thanks for the call, dude. Always good to uh, talk to you. Thanks. All right. All right, so um, we are going to be back. We got a cool, cool last half an hour here. Like I said, we're going to be playing the game. We have Devin Faraci calling in to talk about Spider Man Three. We want Schmoville's opinion. Get get your hands ready on Twitter and on Facebook to give all your points why you either loved Spider Man Three or hated it. We want to have all your points, and I'm going to need your points to come back at Devin with as well. So make sure you do that. Get ready to go. Back in a half and a half, and we're back in a half an hour. We'll be back in five minutes. It's the Schmo's No Podcast with. Brittany Wallet, Christian Harloff, Mark Ellis, Wildman, Ken, the whole fucking crew. Good effort. Thank you. Listening to the to- um, yeah, this I know what this is. Do you? I do know what this is. Do you? This is the very beginning of uh, Back to the Future when the clocks are going back and that forth. Is, that is incorrect. And no. Marty McFly that walks is, in that is, that is and he's about to play music and abs- he does it too abs- loud. Absolutely. And incorrect. the amplifier, no? Absolutely incorrect. Legend. No, absolutely incorrect. Excalibur. Nope. I'm done. Brittany, final answer? I, I, I feel like know. shit's about to go down. It is about to go down. That's why we're playing this. It sounds like something Kubrick would want Schmobo's in the film. going to get it pretty quick. Katie Erbar gets it, the master. Um, it's from the master. Oh, wow. Okay. So, uh, guys. We're that far off with legends. It's the Schmoes No Movies podcast. By the way, guys, um, you guys have been so great with iTunes, by the way. If you go to iTunes, Schmoes No Movies, make sure it's the Schmoes No Movies one. And rate and comment rate and comment on the show. It really helps us. Helps us get really great guests. And you guys have been doing that every week. Even if you're listening, you're watching on Toad Hop, just sign up. If you again, if you have an iTunes account, just go there, rate the show. It really, really helps. Just a star uh, thing yeah. you click on. You click on the stars, leave a comment, let us know what you like about the show. Are you a fan of the new segments? And it helps bump us up in the TV and film categories. Yes. Mm-hmm. We're we're rising stars in that. You guys went from what forty seven to like thirteen. Well, it goes yeah. up and down. So yeah, yeah. Still, I mean, that's our, our all time record right now is thirteen. Thirteen. Awesome. Yeah, thirteen. Yeah. So all right. We're going to do Tweet a Celebrity. Johnny. Come on, come on. We live in a world where every random thought counts. And Brittany Wallach, our co-host tonight, will be picking. It's time to tweet a celebrity. Right. Here we go. This is the pick. This is the pick. Who did you get? Who is going to be tweeted out? Be the right club today. Who is it? Who is it? Marlon Wayans. Yeah! Oh, no. Oh, no. no Marlon, right Marlon Wayans. Marlon Wayans. Johnny Ice, That's there's a, a reason one. you weren't winning before. Aww. Maybe we can talk. Aww. Maybe we can talk about GI Joe, Aww. the first one. No, Listen, he's done a lot of other good <laughs> movies. All right, White Chicks, what? Awesome. Yeah. No, you know, White Chicks, oh, you know, amazing. No, no, the scary no, no, movie no. franchises, do you know, amazing. Do you know Naveed Makalarji produced White Chicks, by the way? And you didn't ask him about it. You son of I'm going to defend this pick for the following Marlon reason: Wayans. is that there's always a Wayans that's surrounding Marlon around Wayans. this ever-present Richard Pryor movie that may or may not they ever said be no. made. They said no, but it's an interesting topic of conversation. Yeah. And also, Marlon Wayans was in one of my favorite movies as a Ute, Mo Money. Yeah. Love me some Mo Money. Well, he, he was really great in Requiem for a Dream. He was really great in that movie. Let's but, get Marlon Wayans on the pod. I've, I've worked with right. him at the comedy right. store before. Right, He's popped in. All right, all right. Don't be a menace to society That's while funny. your juice I, in the John, All right, Johnny, <laughs> Johnny, you love him. You've been trying. How many, how, Johnny, how many times have you tweeted, put his name in the hat? Every single week. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right, so there you go. What's, I bring what, the magic. All right, so tweet Marlon Wayans. Hey, Marlon, they're very excited. They really want to have you on the show. Uh, put uh, at Marlon Wayans. Come on the Schmoes No Podcast. 
Check it out. Uh, you know how it works. If you can bring some of your brothers, that'd be great, too. We'll, we'll have, like, a pickup basketball game afterwards, <laughs> which we're going to win. I want you guys training, okay? That's right. As soon as um, this hernia thing's done. All right, so we're gonna we're waiting for a phone call for from Devin Faraci, who's going to be calling in, and we're going to be talking about uh, Spider-Man 3. So get get the tweets ready, guys. What What is it about Spider-Man 3 that you didn't like? What was it that All you— All of it. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, what was it that you liked? <laughs> Hold, uh, it and then, Hold, Hold it in. Hold it in. And then after we have Devin, we're going to play um, the game. And then, Kenny, just in case— can you just make sure that Devin's ready to go so we have a... Okay, I haven't good. dusted off the game in a while. I'm excited about that. I have a feeling it's a rest versus rust situation. And, Riley's uh, Tyson right now, dude. Riley is, <laughs> right, dude, you know what? You As you said that, I just glanced over and Riley was giving me the death, the, the Emperor Palpatine <laughs> death yeah. stare. He, he's like, I, I'm about to lightning finger your ass. Look, he, oh, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, that sounded terrible. That lightning sounded finger. awful. Yeah, that sounded terrible. You know what? I'll get a cab home. You don't yeah. have to get me a <laughs> all right, all right, he, all right. he jumped up because he didn't know we were playing the game. Then he's like, mm-hmm. I just I'm playing the game. I'm just trying to play the game. And he's, he's, so back. he's been studying oh, all week man, for this. So excited! Yeah, I, well, I watched every movie ever made. <laughs> True. Ever, ever. To prepare Were you for this. Lightning fingering and, something while you're yeah. doing and that too. While I was lightning fingering. Yeah. Ooh, that, did you call that a Zeus? Were you uh, Zeusing? I was Zeusing. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. It's an all Marlon Wayans film. The game. By the yeah, way. Oh, so oh, good. Then, I, then you we, are all going to win. If we do an all Pauly Shore edition, I think I could win that. Well, I would be left in the dust on that. What's What's funny again because. After we played last time, Makuga Wildman calls me up and goes, uh, "Listen, we we got to make that game to six. Riley just gets it too fast. I'm like, no, <laughs> I go, no, we got to keep it at three. That's the rules. We're playing you know? to three, but yeah. the one time I won at the Toad Hop Studio, I won at three, and then we extended the game to like that four. was once. That was once because I won. Yeah, that was once though. You admit it. No, I don't admit it. You anything. robbed me. No, it was just too fast. Back <laughs> Such that was, anger. That's back, back, Such yeah, anger. He, he's a very angry person. I'm he's a very, very competitive angry. person, and when I win and I don't get credit person. for the win, I get the, very upset. Is that where the hemorrhoids came from? Thank You're God. Angry. Wow. It's hemorrhoids and hernia. <laughs> I know. Everybody, you know what? The first question everybody asked about the hernia, they asked two questions. The first one, they say, hey, how you doing? I'm doing fine. The second question is, do they have to go through your ass? <laughs> Why is everybody? No. They don't go through your ass. That's hemorrhoids. That's a totally different thing. But it's funnier. This one, they go through my cock. No. <laughs> no, all right, guys. So we, right above it. All right, so we, we have so we are now we're gonna we're going to be joined by Devin Fracci, who from Badass Digest. And again, like I said, we had we had a conversation when I did Screen Junkies, and we, we had a really great conversation about the top ten. And it was funny too because we were going back and forth with each other with a lot of the same topics. We were on the same page for the most the part. The Venn diagram crosses over. Yeah, quite yeah, a no, bit. He, I agree with a lot of his picks for the summer. But then we came across I don't know how it got brought up. But we started talking about Spider Man Three, and mm-hmm. to his credit, he was. He was very adamant about why he enjoyed the movie and why he liked the movie, and he was he was not apologizing for it, and he stood up for it. So, what I said to him was, I was like, "Why don't you come on the podcast and let's talk about it?" So, what he's going to do, he's going to he's going to I'm going to give him the floor. He's going to talk about Spider Man Three, and then we'll give our points and we'll let Schmoville kind of chime in first. But let's bring it. Let's welcome to the show. We have Devin Fraschi from Badass Digest. Devin, how are you, man? I'm pretty good, guys. Thanks for thanks for having me on. Uh, I'm I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person. I have a I had a friend in front of town who I had to come see, uh, which is also why I'm drunk right now. Oh, perfect. <laughs> All right. Be awesome. You know what, Devin, to be honest, if you're going to defend Spider-Man 3, you should probably be loaded. So <laughs> let's do this, man. That's what I figured. So I've been I've been drinking bourbon for the last two hours, so I think I'm, I'm, I'm ready for Oh, you're not. I like Devin. I like Devin. You, you and emo uh, Peter Parker can oh, be drunk together. God. All right, so let's before before we take shots, and I will say that even though it, it's it's like a very – the crowd here that's in the studio is mostly against your side, but we do have one intern who is on your side and was very happy to hear that you're going to be defending the uh, the movie. But let's before we do that, let's, let's hear your side. The floor is yours. Okay. Here we go. Well, here's the thing. I have to... Wrong! No, I'm kidding. Stop it. Stop it. It's not a perfect movie. I mean, this is not a great movie, okay? So there is a lot that we can come at Spider-Man 3 and we can really pick it apart. Uh, that's fair. Um, I still think it's better than The Amazing Spider-Man uh, by, by a humongous <laughs> amount. Uh, I think that it's a movie that's really unfairly maligned in a lot of ways. And I think what is sort of unfair about it is that people are not quite seeing where Sam Raimi's coming from, especially with a lot of the dark Peter Parker stuff. I mean, as you say, it's the emo Peter Parker, and it's totally silly and it's totally ridiculous, but I think it's the beauty of it. Because in the Sam Raimi movies, and I think in the early Spider-Man comics, Peter Parker's the kind of nerd who, whose idea of what it is to be cool is so absolutely 180 away from what actually is being cool that this is the reason why he's a nerd. He's such a nerd, he doesn't even begin to understand how to be cool. So once he gets infected by the symbiote, 
uh, his idea of what a cool guy does is just the most ridiculous shit in the whole world. I think it's really important to sort of watch this movie and see, and a lot of that staying alive sequence where he's shopping for clothes and stuff, and he's coming out and snapping at girls on the street. Every single girl is disgusted by him. I mean, that, I think that's really important to understand is that Sam Raimi knows that this is not actually cool. This is not supposed to be cool. This is a guy who doesn't get what, it's to be, what, what it is to be cool. Um, so then his big moment is to be, you know, in this bar and do this absolutely bizarre dance number, <laughs> which is ridiculous and totally over the top, but it's absolutely wonderful. I think a lot of fanboys think that, you know, the idea of being cool uh, or dark is about being murderous or whatever, but that isn't the 1964 version of Spider-Man. And Sam Raimi really grew up on that 60s version, and that's the Peter Parker that he, he has there. I mean, and the movie's got a lot of problems. Venom shouldn't have been in that movie from the beginning. Sony forced it on him because the fans uh, really wanted Venom. He wanted uh, the Vulture to be uh, the second villain. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that his version of Sandman is an incredible version of Sandman. I think even with the retcon of making Uncle Ben uh, be involved, being the sanity of all the Uncle Ben's death, um, Sandman is still a really tragic character. Uh, which I think all the best Spider-Man villains are. They're all villains that you can kind of understand at the end of the day or feel bad for. I think Sam Man's one of the, the great ones in that way. You know, for a drunk guy, he's making a lot of great movie. points. Right? Yeah. Yeah. What kind of bourbon well, are you let, drinking? Let, 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 let's let him finish, and we'll, we'll, we'll hit after I'm it. drinking the smartest bourbon in the room. I'm drinking early times. It's, 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 oh. It's, it's, it's mm. bourbon in the place. He's drinking bourbon uh, at a Holiday Inn Express, <laughs> like uh -huh. a winner. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, so I, you know, there's, there's a lot that's wrong with the movie. I think the movie is overcrowded. I think there's a lot of problems. I think the, um, the sequence where the goblin meets up with Sandman is like, let's team up. Like, yeah, that's ridiculous. Do you know you... what I mean? I mean I'm sorry, Venom. Uh, Maybe meet, meet up. That, that, that's ridiculous. Like, one of the things I do like about it, though, what Sam Raimi did, is that his version of Ed Brock, I think, is actually better than the comic book version. Because um, in the comics, Eddie Brock is this gigantic, beefed out, roided up blonde guy. But in the movie, it's Topher Grace, who's just the dark mirror image of, uh, of Tobey Maguire. And that's perfect. Venom should be the opposite of, of, of Peter Parker. Uh, he should be the same guy. So the idea is that this version of Eddie Brock could have been Peter Parker if he was just a better dude. And because Peter Parker was raised by great, um, you know, by, by, by uh, uh, Uncle Ben and Aunt May, he became a really good guy. Uh, but this version of Eddie Brock didn't have anybody to raise him that way. So instead of being this giant, hulked out blonde dude, right. he's a little nerdy guy who is just. He's the real dark Peter Parker. All right, so, look, uh, so I, these are all things like I love about this movie. And Devin makes some really great points. And look, the fact that you 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 go and say that the movie is flawed is, is that that was my biggest problem with it too. But I, I had a lot of problem with the fact that it was crying. It was flawed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was flawed. But there was a lot of crying and emo stuff. And like you you brought that up too. But here, here I want to read you a couple of tweets that have been coming in, and then you can you can comment okay. on these. Here here are a couple of the tweets. So uh, it's from Chris Garbo thirty six Sandman. Are you kidding? The scientists were morons who didn't check their experiment and practically killed a man. Alan Cumbus says, I will, I will give him Sandman, although the way they ended the movie sucked. Mm. Uh, let's see. I hate yeah. another one, Joshua Stein. I hate Spider-Man 3 because there are too many villains which diluted down the plot. The mm -hmm. script sucked and emo Peter Parker is just lame. Uh, I agree with this guy. The emo Peter Parker and anything never bothered me that much. It's the way it was meant to be. Uh, uh, let's cover, there's tons of them, but let's just go one more. Uh, Louise... 99 was really weak in storytelling. Emo Parker, no thank you, but Venom is what saved it for me. I'm glad they didn't do the Mandarin angle. So, I mean, oh, it, yeah. it looks like they a lot. there's a lot of agreement in the fact that some of the emo stuff worked in what Raimi was trying to do, but my biggest problem was after you have a movie like both 1 and 2, it's just not that kind of follow-up, and I think that's why Raimi admits it was such a disaster. I, with with yes, I agree with the 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 adding of all these different villains. That's what set it off, and the studio wanted too many people right. in there. But it doesn't. I just don't think that at that point for well, what they were trying to do in the franchise they had that that was the movie they should have made. You know, I, I'm I'm not going to disagree. I think there's a big mistake. And I think that even you can see in the movie structurally the idea that Spider-Man finds the the black suit when a uh, your lands next to him. I mean, that's just that, that that's almost Sam Raimi saying, "Well, you know what, Sony? Fuck you! Like here it is. Like yeah. right. fine. You want the you want the black suit in here? Here it is. I'm going to put it in the laziest way possible because Raimi's a better. But that fucks us. Than. But that, I really but... do feel like. I do feel like he sort of was like, fine, okay, we're going to get the black suits to move along. I actually do um, have a funny story about that being true, about Sam Raimi putting things in the film just to say fuck you. Yeah, and yeah. I, but, that does, that, but that says fuck you to us. It doesn't say fuck you Is to that them. a little bit of an yeah. ego trip when you take that out on the studio? But you because you're like, look, I've made two of these, and they're giant and successful, and this one's going to mm -hmm. be the same way, that I, I know people are going to pay to see my movie, so I can just put some fuck yous in the studio. Yeah. When you never would have done that before. My big problem with Spider-Man 3 isn't the, the singing and dancing. 
dance routine because not every movie has to be that dark and without like that wouldn't fit in a Nolan Batman movie but not every comic book movie has to have that tone mm-hmm. I kind of thought that was a that was a nice risk to take I just hated right. what they did with Venom Venom yeah. is the coolest Spider-Man he villain been the only one. of all time he and yeah. the only he put villain. Salmon in there yeah. and I know Venom's in the movie and as a fan I'm sitting in the fucking theater yeah, like, waiting in two yeah. hours oh, to right. see Venom and it's like so, hey meanwhile, there's watching the watching Harry I, I, so, and Mary Jane have an awkward well, gonna, like romantic know, scene tell, yeah. in the kitchen I'm, I'm oh, love. what's that Devin? I'm sorry. I, uh, I I'm, I'm gonna come to you guys as sort of an older Spider-Man fan. I'm 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 like an old dude at this point, uh, and I kind of hate Venom. <laughs> and Sam Raimi does too. And I think Venom is actually like sort of. Um, so Venom is in a lot of ways sort of a uh, a betrayal of a lot of the uh, basic core values of the Spider-Man franchise uh, as, as a comic book. He's a character that was introduced uh, to pretty much uh, tie into toy sales because. Uh, the black suit for Spider-Man from Secret Wars was introduced just as a way to sell toys. This guy knows his shit. Yeah. Uh, Venom was then introduced uh, in a period where uh, Todd McFarlane was taking uh, the Spider-Man comics and I think really fucking them up. I mean, making Mary Jane into these just endless cheesecake uh, poses that was really <laughs> horrible. Um, to me, Venom is a, a real vestige of a bad period of comics. So yeah. I think I'm making it be Tobey Maguire, who is the actual dark version of Peter Parker, I think it, it's, it's a better choice. I don't think it works. I mean, that's the most important thing to say. I don't think that it actually ends up working. And I think that that's... But I that, do and I... think that uh, that's a great choice, is to make that character be the mirror image of, of, of Peter Parker. Yeah, and I think, Devin, I think that's, that's where we probably, I mean, we, we figured it all out then, too, because the, the fact is, you're not necessarily, you're not defending the movie as much as you're just defending the choice and how, how Raimi shot the movie, what he did there. So, and, and, I, and I think your points are all valid, and I, but I think overall we can agree it's, it's not a very well-executed movie all, all in all. I think it's a problematic movie. Okay. But again, I'll say that I think it's better than The Amazing Spider-Man. I, I, I think, That's I think a it's better than a lot of other superhero movies. <laughs> yeah. um, I think that in terms of... I think there are a lot of movies that we forgive, yeah. uh, a lot of problems. And I think that because Raimi's sensibility is a Silver Age sensibility, yeah. which is not that hip right now. I mean, everybody's really into the dark. sort of more the, the, the darker stuff. Yeah. And, and Raimi's into the gee whiz, uh, hey kid, science. Uh, and adventure stuff. Yeah. And so I think that's sort of what I think turns a lot of people off. For He's going to love that Archie vs. Zombies movie. I was just going to yeah. say. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, Devin, th- uh, thank you so much for calling in. I, your point, Again, your points are great, and we'd like to have you actually come on into the show one of these days. So um, You made the cut, dear boy. Can well I, done. Can I- can I can I actually come on in, into the studio drunk? Is that is, is that all right? That's, you, you, yeah, we're all yeah. drunk now. Yeah. Right. We're all, we've been drinking beer since the show started. So make sure you follow Devin at, <laughs> at Devin CF, and again, you can find him at Badass Digest. And Devin, thank you so much for calling in. And we'll we will we will hit these uh we'll hit the disagreement bars once again, my friend. Thank you so much. Yeah, but I love it. I love it. I I, I love having a good friendly uh, uh debate and a, a good friendly uh, disagreement. And I look forward to all the Twitter hate. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> you enjoy your early all time. Right. Devin, thank, thanks a lot, Devin Farachi, Everybody, all right, bye bye. Bye bye. That was impressive. Yeah, was, dude, he knows his stuff. That was he, impressive. He knows his shit. That was why I had him on the show. I mean, the fact, look, I don't. Again, I don't agree. I think that it came back to the fact that he made a lot of the points that it's not a, it's a flawed movie. He enjoyed it more than most in, in for what Raimi was doing. So there you go. Yeah. Um, all right, let's let's Riley. You ready? You're licking your chops over here. I can't, let's what? do the game. Yeah, Who's I'm ready. Who's competing in the game? All right, so it's time to play the game. Time to play the game! <laughs> <laughs> We're getting thrown into alliance. I'm enjoying it. All right, guys, it's time for the game. We haven't played in a while. For those of you new to Schmoes and No Movies and haven't heard this before, where's my... Uh-oh. I'll tell you how the game is played. Johnny Ice, our engineer, is going to play a clip yeah. from a movie. Whoever can guess what movie it is correctly first wins the point. Your buzzer is your name. Yes. My name is going to be Ellis for this yeah. because it's different than Riley. We share the same name, Mark, which is from the God of War Mars, and we're about to kick some ass. That yeah, is so, correct, so sir. That's it. So all you got to do, again, you just call your name out, and then you answer. And Mark Riley has won the last two. Two, okay, yes. Okay, so Mark who's, Riley. Who's, who's competing? Who's on it the It is going yeah. to be Mark Riley, mm-hmm. defending champion, our new Co- not our new co-host, our, yeah. our co-host for today, Brittany, Brittany who's seen Pacific Rim. I like this. I like yeah, this. Yes, uh, myself and you. Okay, Next. that's it. Play ball. All right. Mm. That's it then, huh? Yeah. You know what, second thoughts, maybe I won't have a drink with you. Mark. Okay, then I'll go Mark, home. Mark, 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 Mark. Uh, Ellis, fuck. Patriot Games. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Impressive. That Thank was you. impressive. All right, all right, Thank all right. you. You're all week. Yeah. 10.30 show, totally different from the 8.30 show. 
So you look good. Get to the castle. Good. Thank you. You may have uh Ten years, man! Mark Christian! And... Got it first. That is gross point Fuck. blank. Wow. Thank you. Damn. Try the Look at Ellis. Yeah, I, I had like that. I had that one. It was too late. You the only one who made it? Not the only one. Did you kill us? Where were you, Charles? Thought I saw Blair. I went out after him. I got lost in the storm. Mark, uh, Mystic River. Fuck. Fire's got the temperature up all over the camp. My pet monster won't last long though. The swamp thing. <laughs> Johnny, I just looked at nice the intern. Like, is that even a movie? Neither <laughs> hey will we. Well, Chris and I don't get it. We should just. Oh shit! I know what it is. Brittany, yeah. the thing. Yeah. 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 Oh, nice. I got one. Yeah, hey, all right. I like how you answered in the form of a question. <laughs> Brittany, the, the thing? thing? <laughs> I just assume I'm always <laughs> wrong. What the hell was that? Oh, no. <laughs> well, that was a crime. You curse scrubbing pews. Alice. Uh, teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, shit, Ellis, that's the win. Ellis, I didn't know that. Guys, wow. please. I want to say this from the bottom of my heart. Please tip your waitresses. They work so must. hard for wow. you. Oh Ellis taking her head away from Very early. nice, sir. Go, wow. Spurs, go. We got game one. We're going to get three more against the Miami. Yes. Al Alan Cumbus asked if I was cheating looking at Twitter. I, have not, I got none right. <sighs> your child, happy, loving, caring. You believe this shit? Wait, it's it's you. Twenty four hours a day. What are we playing? Seven we playing? days a week. Game's over. Ellis won. Yeah, that was it. That was one. Hey, Johnny, uh, I, I, is, is it going to kill you to give me some victory music? Yeah. <laughs> that, was that was it. That was Van Halen. Yeah, hey. All right, a bunch of kids who were creeped out Screepy, by me. All right, pretty, children. don't let me babysit, moms. All right, pretty crazy, pretty crazy show tonight. Awesome show tonight. Um, yeah, who won the game? No, be you. You did. I'm going to give you. Ellis. 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 I Mark, got a point. Props. Ellis. Give me your props. You took it away. Riley was. You were like. It was like Buster Douglas, man. I, yeah. well, I, I gave Brittany a mercy one because I like her, but everybody yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Goes, goes. That, that, I almost that got was you. good. Almost got you. All right. So before we go, uh, again, we have about eight minutes left. I want to take some calls from Schmoville, so make sure you call in 323-622-8623. We're going to. I want to talk to Riley first. Before we take calls from Schmoville, because I want Riley, a couple stories broke today that you yeah. talked about on. Again, Riley has been running our website, schmoesno.com. If you have not correct. gone there, I'm telling you, go check it out. It is so impressive what he's been doing with these news stories and everything we've been doing, and we've been updating the podcast. So go check it out. We've given away. Um, posters and and stuff to people all you got to do you can comment on your through your facebook so you keep commenting there and you become a top commenter we give away pr uh, prizes to top commenters so make sure you do that yeah. riley what's a story this uh today the last couple of days that you really uh we want to talk about that we want to ask Schmobile about well uh, actually some some people were were hitting me up about a story that we posted this week about the angry cat mem oh god that is being made into a movie did you did you just call it a mem? Me, me, meme? What is it fucking wait, 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 called? It's meme. like my mom. Yeah. My mom asked well, me what a meme was the is other it day. Is it a meme? meme? It's for me. Meme. It's okay. a meme. Okay. No, I'm I glad you corrected me. I only know that because me, I'm throwing an internet-themed birthday party at, on Saturday. Oh, yeah, good. There you go. Well. I get a grumpy meme cat. You're talking about Grumpy Cat. Tartar. Grumpy Cat. Tartar yeah. sauce. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. ask. Whose original name was a Tard? Let's ask Schmobile what they think about this. What's a Grumpy Cat? Is that what it's called? Yeah. It was, you know, it's Deadline announced it. All right. All right. So, hey, you're Hey, Is that yeah, really? no shit. Hey, you're in oh, Schmobile. Jesus. Who do we got? Um, you got Dylan from Canada, eh? Hey, Dylan, hey. what's up, man? So, Dylan, what do you think about this Grumpy Cat movie? You excited to see it or what? <laughs> uh, not really. I only heard of Grumpy Cat like a year ago. Well, actually, a couple months ago, sorry. Um, I don't know how they can turn this into a movie. Like, I don't see a whole story there. Well, they're like, trying to grumpy. they're trying to turn it into like a Garfield kind yeah. of thing. But yeah. would yeah, you agree? Wouldn't you agree too, that but... it's going to be outdated by the time the film comes out? It's already kind of a passe thing. I mean, this pop culture, you know, it changes so quickly on the internet. It's not going to be relevant by the time right. the film comes out. Exactly. That's my only yeah, beef yeah. with it. Yeah. Exactly. I totally agree. Now, yeah. so what? What if I told you though that Seth MacFarlane was writing the movie? I know he's not. But what? What if? What if he was? Would you care then? Yeah, I would. I like Ted, and I like the. You know, comedy, he was in that, and I thought Ted was hilarious, so I, I would be interested in that, see the trailer, but 
you know, I see the reviews. What do you think about Will Ferrell and Jack Black potentially being stars in it? Is that the truth? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm, That's interesting. All right. Uh, Okay. I don't know. So thank Canada calling in. Thank you so it's much for the call. It's just going to be a film of them throwing the cat back and forth for yeah, two they're, hours. They're, they're obviously going in to just buy a summer home or something. Yeah. Because right. this, yeah. is, this, is, yes. this is a fucking ridiculous movie. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's the fact that they're putting money towards this. But you're makes honest me angry. to God going to have legions of crazy grumpy cat fans. Do you know how many Twitter followers she has? It's insane. I, d- yeah. I can't even imagine. I know too much about this cat. And <laughs> I know it's, I know it's going to do you really do. well because of her legions of fans. Well, let's wow. let's switch gears again to let's let's talk about let's talk to Schmoville here about some stuff. Any movie news you want to talk about? Anything we've talked about tonight? It could be anything that happened on the podcast. Hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Hey, it's Stuart from Hawaii. Hey man, what's up, dude? I, so what do you got? Any of that. Stuart Stuart from Hawaii. <laughs> ah, okay, right. Um, first of all, I just want to say Makugi did an awesome job. Makugi did an the, awesome job. All right. Yeah. Makuga. Wild Man TV. Um, I just want to say Makuga should have his own, like Tiffany has facts. He should have his own uh, He's going to. on YouTube. He's going to. It's going to be on Schmo Plus. You'll be able to find so Let's not get it. crazy here, yeah. Stuart. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. The guy's good in spurts. He's good in spurts. <laughs> now, if you go, if you go, to, go, to, go to YouTube.com slash Schmo, Schmo Plus. And uh, and subscribe there, and very soon, within the next couple of weeks, you'll start to see the wild man have his TV segment on that. And channel. listen to our podcast on Tuesday. Stuart three's too much. Me, Makuga, and Justine Marino. Thank you, Stuart. All right, let's take some more calls here from Schmoville. Yeah, something not about something about me or Christian. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're hey you're <laughs> hey you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Sweet. No one. Silence. That Nobody wants to. You see what you've it's done? Cat. Know, so. That was the one. Grumpy for, Cat okay. called in. Yeah. You just farm out all these segments, and now we're left with, oh, I, I won the game. Hello? Nobody yeah. gives hey. a shit. Oh, we got, hey. hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? This is Aaron. Hello? Hey, Aaron. What's up, man? So uh, what do you got for us tonight? Oh, um, did you guys see the new Runner Runner trailer today that premiered with uh, Ben Affleck and Justin Timberlake? You, did you see it? Brent? Yeah. No. What is, what is it's, it? Like a, it's it's, it's, wait, it's six, called six, Runner Runner. It's from uh, Brad Furman. He did uh, the Nick and Lawyer, I think. Oh, and, right. Um, okay. Yeah. Schmo Kid just saw. So, so yeah, what, no, what is it? I saw it this morning. It's uh, Justin. It's like, it's like an like online movie. gambling kind of movie. And Ben Affleck plays like a villain. And it looks, it looks really cool. It looks like something different for him. Mm. Okay. Well, hey, hey Schmo Kid. So what did, thank you for the call, dude. Appreciate it. So uh, what no the only the only you know really quick buzz I, I was reading about was the fact that it's uh, Ben Affleck and he's turning back to you know of course acting and he's playing the villain in this, in this okay. situation. Look, so how's he looking? Is it look convincing? Oh, yeah, yeah, you got it. You okay, got it. So, all right, all right. Thank you, Schmoke Kid. I, I like that he, the Ben Affleck's doing the the gambling movie because he had a, that big yeah. gambling Addiction, thing. Yeah, that, that yeah, yeah for sure. Um, all right, it's a great show. We had Ken. You got anything for us, or that we should be uh, plugging and talking about? What do we got? Well, don't forget to check every day Schmoesno.com for all your movies reviews. Views, news, and clues. Um, Are you using your sexy voice? That's right. Sure uh, I'll be like appearing it. at Brittany Wallach's internet birthday party this you weekend. Goddamn yeah. right you are. Uh, big event there. And uh, internet next week- birthday party. Yeah. Wait, you can't just drop that. Then not invite me. <laughs> Brittany, explain quickly what it is on the occasion of your birthday. It's my most amazing party I've ever thrown. There's gonna be like 200 people celebrating all the best memes from the internet. It's memes. 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 Yes. Or my mom says memes. What, what's going on with the Napsack Files? Are we playing that? Or what yeah. we, what's going Napsack on? Napsack Files will be uh, debuting as an encore presentation here on Toad Hop. We're working with Johnny Ice on that. I got uh, Chip Dornell this week, one of our Schmoes No dot com writers. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, love Chip, good and, guy. Uh, and uh, coming soon too is the Schmoes No Writers Room podcast, which is going to be uh, 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 in depth. Is that confirmed now? We're going to do that. Yeah, I, yeah. Oh, I, but we're doing. Are you? Are we going to? You're going to tape it, play we're it first. Here. Yeah, it, we're going it. that. Day. And then, uh, of course, next week we get comedian and actor Jamie Kaler on the on the podcast. Love that. All right, guys. So again, Brittany, thank you so much for of joining course, us. You can't You're going to come back and visit again. I would love to. Knock it out of the park, kid. I said yep. I got that one question right. Yeah, and Brittany, <laughs> you got Brittany is good on you. Brittany yeah. is also the the lovely lady of one of our great great writers our comic book uh, guru if you will matt yep. key there he is right there in the he corner is. back the yeah. he is doing he's, he's smell a great, like great Dracar and buffalo wild <laughs> <laughs> by, by the way uh the intern asked if that was tom green when he first walked in. amazing oh, okay. no, all right really? guys so oh, get, follow, awesome. follow everybody follow at schmo kid at riley around at cospan at josh mccuga ls 5150 at schmo's no christian harloff at Brittany wallach and the whole fucking crew so we'll be back next week Tune in, check it out. Peace out, mother F. might not even like that size. Magnum Trojans don't tell lies. I'm a Star Trek and Enterprise. Make gigantic deals, super size. Watch too long, might lose your eyes. Like Ellie Driver from Kill Bill. See, I've been had a license to ill, ill. But the real deal is that I'm still.